My name's Lauren Schaefer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. I love this stool. Um, I read the South Florida Oaks meetup with these guys. It's not you. You were standing. Those guys. And Jenna, who's not here. She couldn't be with her today. Um, but she's just as excited about Asher. Um, so Mike and Shane. And we are a UXPA international chapter, South Florida chapter. So you get discounts um, through for like, if you want to go to a UXPA course or something like that, I can get you discounts. Hi, come on in. Uh, Veronica? Are you Veronica? Or Patricia? I'm like, I have 50-50 chance. And I still, <laughs> this is why I didn't say your name. I'm like, I'm gonna. Um, okay, so we're still missing Veronica. Um, let's see, we are also sponsored by Ultimate Software, which is a cool company you're at right now. Very cool company. I've been here for almost 11 years. Um, HR company and by O'Reilly Media. So we have two books we'll give away. With. Very good. Okay. Um, so thank you all for that. It's, I didn't realize we had so many iron hackers here. I'm going to have to send Bruto a thank you card. Um, <laughs> do you want to go over benefits? Do you want me to? Um, we heard uh, from a few folks in this room about what they like about Axure, why they started using Axure. So you may be in a situation where you're in an interview and they say, what do you use? Oh, we don't use that here. What would you say about why you want to use Axure? They say, oh, we use Envision instead. Sometimes people ask me, what do you use? And I say, PowerPoint. What? <laughs> if my only problem is getting stakeholders to edit something, explain what they want, they have PowerPoint on their computers. So PowerPoint may have been the awesome wireframing tool for that situation. Axure is not Sketch or Envision, and we heard a little bit about why. Early on when we were doing websites, it might have been sufficient to make a sitemap where here's what the page looks like. Oh, great, and here, then it takes you to this other page. Envision's great for that. You can click through. It's good for showing the happy path. But nowadays, with today's libraries, our newer computers, there's a lot of these micro interactions, there's interaction that you do with the website, and by doing that, it gives the user the mental model that you are trying to build for how the website works. The, we call them the affordances, right? How does it look? Does it look like it should be pushed? And then when you push it, what happens? And we heard that Sometimes if you're giving a design to an engineer, they don't quite get it. So what we want to do in our jobs as UX people is really take our designs to that level of having the, inter how fast does it work, right? Get that interaction. Does it slide? And trying to explain that verbally is not working. So Axure is built to be able to demonstrate how you are designing the interactivity, more so than maybe Sketch and Envision, which Sketch and Envision are great for their purposes, just like PowerPoint may be great ab above all these other ones for, for those purposes, too. So if someone asks you why Axure, you ask them, well, what, what are we doing in this company? What do you need? And then I, you could recommend what you wanted. But Axure allows you to zero in on maybe this one interaction or that interaction so you can show the engineer what you mean but also importantly you want to see how people use it if you want to do a prototype for how people test it you want to get it right if if the animation's not right they may not get it and someone says well that design's wrong right uh, you, you've got it let's go back to the drawing board when really you needed to have a higher fidelity interaction yes so uh I'm not going to use a sketch. I'm going to design directly into Azure. Yes. And I don't have to use Flint or to do, uh, I, use, I do it directly in Azure. Correct. Everything I will do here. Yeah. Now. That's right. So you understand, you can, you can pop sketch into Azure too. I can you can't that. with Nine. Nine has a plugin that you can use to take things from Sketch and put them into Azure. So it's really just that the tools have very different purposes. Sketch is kind of, does anyone know OmniGraphle? Yep. Yeah. Sketch is kind of like the next version of OmniGraphle in a sense, which is also very similar to Illustrator, but just more targeted towards creating interfaces for a website versus creating interfaces for a children's book. It's all about high quality Bezier, you know, tools and vector, but it's all flat. Right. It's that's the, the to me the thing that still kills it. It's flat. Um, they're trying to become more interactive, and they've actually I've noticed since. Um, Adobe came out with XD, yeah. which has the clickables that within six months 
Sketch came out with their version of it, right? Because Sketch without Envision is just flat designs, right? You have to have that clickable. But even then, you're still clicking flat designs. And even with XD, which I feel a little bit further, you can do a little bit of movement, um, and you can kind of dummy that up and Envision, but you're putting a lot of work to like make something look interactive that's flat. And this just does it. That's what it does. You can, and the other thing I love about it, and I would warn about it, is Axure is very powerful. You could use it to sketch and do flowcharts, which is, I give my BAs keys, we have internal keys. I give them keys, and I'm just like, here, do a flowchart, do a flowchart, just ignore the rest of it, just do a flowchart. Boxes and arrows, right? Let's figure out what we're talking about. Because you can do something that simple as whiteboarding, or you can go in and write JavaScript and do heavy command line things underneath them. But I mean, you can take it from a whiteboard to a developer. And so I think it's important to be cognizant of that because the point is to make you faster, not to slow you down. And I have seen some designers go, okay, well I did this, but then I needed to make it sweep, and I needed to make it open, and I needed to make it pop in. And they spent two more weeks on it. I'm like, okay, you could have explained that to the developer in one day. You didn't need to take the prototype that far. You only take it as far as you need to do it to communicate what you're trying to communicate and stop. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, and then the tool ended up inhibiting him because he wanted to use all the cool things he could do. Yeah, because like, Sketch is good for high fidelity. This, you can make it look exactly like your website. There's no point. No. This mean, has you, a Bezier tool. It has all yeah, the same you don't, colors. You want to go, this is a button. I don't care it's blue. You know, it's going to be a color, or what the radius is, or whatever. It goes, I want to lay out, I want to show you how it works, I want to demonstrate business logic. You know, otherwise, like you said, spend two weeks of making it actually look like ultimates. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. no more to place. Okay. I would say it depends tool. on your workflow. It's another tool for your toolbox. Yeah. Well, you can also create library of widgets with your yeah. standards built yes. into them, with interactions built in so that you go basically to an instant prototype by dragging things, you know. Yeah. And, and what you needed to do is what you needed to do in your day-to-day -day work. If you're having trouble with your stakeholder not buying into your design because they don't get the awesomeness of that interactivity, you're going to have to show it to that person. Yes. And Axure allows you to do things like in, embed data into it. So you can do a predictive search and have it in Axure. I type chair. And it will it will show a list of predicted search. So you can you can put some data, real data in it to give your stakeholders what they need. It's not a stupid pet trick, as David Letterman would say, or a dog and pony show. Only do that, as Lauren said, if you need to break through that ceiling of of your stakeholders maybe not getting the awesomeness that that interactivity or whatever will give you that maybe Envision cannot. Express. So, it works really good if you're working with offshore people yeah. because you're passing stuff over to development teams who are awake while you're, while you're asleep and they can actually see how things are supposed to behave. Mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was my question. I, I work with a team in Saudi Arabia and one of the things is, is that they don't get the interactions and the explanations that I give is a, a little bit of a language barrier. So my question is, when you like, I have almost a complete prototype with like 95% of the finish line of this project. So what do you guys do? Break out like segments, saying, okay, this is how this section works outside of your prototype. Well, or you incorporate that. I try to be fast, so sometimes I'm just showing like micro interactions. You know, sort of like the interaction is a call out from a page flow. And I can show some. I'll show some of that too. Yeah, there's places you can put notes. notes. And all sorts of things on specific components, on actions. You can download, you can generate, auto-generate like specs. Is what I'm saying. So I'm saying that's, that's going to be, that's not going to come back into Figma, right? That's just going to be its own separate file. It's its own separate file. file. Yeah. And one thing I would caution is because this creates, it's a WYSIWYG editor. Yeah. It's creating real code. It's shit code. Yeah. That's yeah. very important yeah. to understand. Yeah. Make sure your developers understand that because you get a so-so developer and they go, oh, it's already coded, I'll just copy and paste. Inspect oh, element, copy, paste. No, don't use this code. It's and the really smart developers will know it's shit code, yeah. but their boss won't care, and so they'll say, we'll use it anyway. We know it's shit. Yeah, it's like divs and magic. It's not. So really quickly, I'm going to show you two things, and we're going to go through the tour. So this is screenshots, flat screenshots of what we're going to be creating. 
I just thought these images were cool. I found them online. Um, so this is a gallery page, right? And then we have a detail page. Hey! Are you trying to sneak in? I saw that. No one can see you. Hi, Veronica. And then it goes, oh, well, you have to sign in. You need an account for Monster Topia, or whatever this is, Monster Direct, to buy a monster. I don't know if you want to buy them. That seems cool. Maybe you're buying like an animated thing. I don't know. You can make your own story. So then you sign in, you create an account, whatever, and it says, congrats, you just bought this monster. Here's your confirmation number. Pretty simple. If you were to prototype this in Sketch, you've got four screens, right? You put it in Vision and you click through it. Now, what you have to try and figure out in Vision then is, I want this to switch, right? I want you to be able to slide it, and when you slide it, I want it to change. You're leaving a lot of interpretation up to the developer right now, right? What is that, how does that exactly work? So I can come in here, and I can hit preview, and I can log in and go to Glablin, and I can actually move it. Aww. That's how I want it to work. <laughs> I want it to work like that. And when I purchase this, oops, let me log out, because I'm logged in. And now when I go to purchase this, oh, I don't have an account, and I sign up, now this is not the best design, it's a workshop. <laughs> but it just goes red, because I haven't filled these out, and they're required, right? And so if I fill this out and I try to sign up, it still won't let me in. Maybe I could throw an error message, right? I could take this further, workshop. But it won't let me in. How are you communicating that on your flat sketch screen in Envision? You can't, right? So you have, this is all part of, and then I can sign in. And then I can also show you over here, I've got some variables, an onload, a purchase, and a logged in. Now I'm logged in, so it says yes. If I go and I log out, I'm not logged in anymore. So if I go back to the gallery, and I try to purchase Groklin, Gaglin, whatever, I made that up, it's cute though, right? <laughs> I try to purchase it, I'm not logged in to the system. So when I go to purchase, it's gonna ask me to log in. Now I click log in, what's this say? Now I have a variable in the back end that says I'm logged in. So I've purchased it, but I can also go back to the gallery, hypothetically purchase another one. When I hit purchase, it bypasses the login screen because I'm logged in, it shouldn't show it to me. So when you create something in Asher and you give it to a developer and you hand them the link and you say, here, go play with this, this is how it should work, and you can have notes and all sorts of other things, you're actually showing them instead of just four flat screens and them trying to put together the difference. Um, so this is what we're gonna create today. So you've got like the slide out, um, the login, log out, we'll see how far we get with that. Um, I'll definitely show you how to do click through screens and how to do things like this. He's so cute. Um, okay, so that's um, what we're going to do today, and to show you, because uh, I think some of you are kind of getting to this, um, whoops, that's in the wrong one, the live, well, I'll show you this. This is a library that we use internally. So you notice up here, it says library, and this is a regular file, so I can open this in when I'm working on a day-to-day -day basis, I can open this library through my file, which let me show you that makes more sense. Uh, file. Oh, we'll just do it in here. If I go to libraries, I gotta load it. Um, I don't have it in here right now, sorry, bear with me. This is the part where they've moved things around on me. Add image folder. Let me open up my other file, open. Here we go, name template. I hit it right. Open this uh, Ignite template. Here it goes. Ignite is our DLS ultimate software. So I'm at work, and we use a material-based library. 
and I would have designed a page. I can come in here and I can say I need a basic page, which looks like that. Um, and it's going to have, I don't know, put this heading, and I want some sort of copy here, which I'll have to fill in because dummy copy is not good. And maybe this applies to this group of people. And let's do a text box. And I'm going to ask them a question, and then they're going to turn on some sort of toggle. It doesn't make sense, but and then I can preview it. And then we've got all these things pre-coded, so I can click in here. It goes up to the top. I can enter information. I can get rid of it. it goes, the label goes back down in. It has all that material stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I test this with customers, instead of testing it in vision form, and go, okay, what would you put here? And people just start making up how they would use it, right? I can actually put a form in front of them and say, okay, fill it out and see where they have issues. That's what I find that's the most powerful thing about Asher. All right, so to the interface. So I'll just kind of try and sweep across. So we start out, we've got our selection tools at the top. There's different ways to select. It's really kind of a personal preference. So if I have two things, two boxes here, and I have full selection mode, I can just partially get that box, and I got them both. If I have partial selection mode, you have to go all the way around the object before it will select it kind of personal preference, but if you're trying to get stuff, that can be helpful. Also a little tip, if you have two things on top of one another, which will happen, let me make this a different shape so it's easier to see. Um, because you're going to be layering things, sometimes you want things to show up that are hidden in the background, you want them to come forward, and I need to be able to get to that item. I want to get to the dark gray box. You can do this, and then you can shift click and go away from it, right? Or you can just click and then click again, and it'll click what's ever behind it. So you can soft click back through your layers, which is really nice. You've also got outline over here, which shows you all of your layers. And you can name them. So I could call this one my big rectangle, and I could call this one my little one. And then no matter how much stuff I put on this screen or what I do, or blah, 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 and I need to find it, I can get to it right there. So you have your layers, and then you have your pages. Uh, we've got our connectors, which are great. I highly recommend using this. Um, I believe all UX people should start with flows. Um, and so if I want to start with a flow, I'm going to have, I don't know, user. Oops. User does this. Ah, it's doing it to me again. This is a bug in Axure. Sure I might have to restart. Axure sure 9. And then. Or no, the user does this, and the user does that, and maybe there's a decision somewhere. If I go to the flow library, this is all just installed by default, your flow library. I can even do this, which is a little better. Should have done that in the first place. God, where's my, here's my actor. And a decision. And then maybe I'm in a meeting with my BA, and I'm like, okay, I think they do this, I think they do this. This has been the, such a valuable thing for me to do in meetings where somebody's talking through what they want. And the people are like, yeah, it's like this, no, like that. And there's all this discussion going on. I pull up Axure, I stick it on a big screen. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm understanding. And suddenly you see everyone like, oh, yeah, no, that one is not where we're going. You know, it just puts everybody on the same page to see that flow. So you can start to, you know, type in what's happening. And then that's where this connector right here. So when you're in connection mode, then you can bring all these guys together. You can choose your color. Whatever color you set it to will persist. I like pink because it's easy to see. But if I wanted to be more ulti focused, I could do green. And now you'll notice these are green. I can also go over to the style menu and make this round. Maybe I think round connectors look better, whatever. Um, and you can click on it and say, I don't know, then for if logged in. Whatever, that should really be a decision for those of you who know flow. But maybe a yes, and this will be a no. Okay, so again, talking about it's a very powerful tool, but you can do some very simple things with it, and don't like overlook the power of some of these simple things in libraries that you have here. So that's your connector, and we can close our connection mode now. It takes you out of connector mode. Uh, insert, this is very similar for those of you that do sketch, where you can do quick keys. They don't have this in eight, so if you end up on eight, using eight somewhere, they don't have that, it's new for nine but you could do your pen tool, your rectangle. Um, it's a full Bezier tool, so you can do all your different angles and things like that. 
like you're used to in other products. Again, it's not really meant for high thigh, but you can if you need to. Um, your front and back layering, uh, this is obviously a grouping, you know, everyone, assuming everyone in here knows grouping. I want to put a whole bunch of things together so you can grab them at once. Uh, how you zoom in and zoom out. Another new tool with nine is the pinch zoom. If you have a map, you can do it with your trackpad. You don't have to choose a zoom number, which you had to do an eight. And then you've got all your alignment tools. I'm going to come to these guys on the right a little bit later, except I will say the preview button is what opens it in your browser. So no matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, saved or not, you can click preview and see what you have in your browser. This is very important for anybody who was never a developer. You have to test your stuff. You're going to start creating interactions. You're going to start creating different dynamic things. And if you don't go into a browser constantly and check that that works, you may get all the way through a project and realize that half your stuff didn't quite hit the mark. Um, and it can be little things, like even on here, I got messed up because I was thinking this was swipe left and that was swipe right. My rights and lefts were getting messed up based on where I wanted to go and where I wanted to start. I couldn't remember which was which. You have to go in and test it real quick. Just go in when and... you do preview, you would push it online, right? Nope. Preview no. is just like local. Runs local on your computer. Good question. Do, can we choose armor sizes? Yes. So if you unclick, deselect everything, and then over here in the style pane, page dimensions, uh, I can make this like a uh, galaxy. Sorry, what is that? So okay. in the style sorry. menu, with nothing clipped. And it, then it gives you your artboard options. I could also make my background color really annoying. Uh, okay, yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Wait, Lauren, how did you change the little connectors into like arrows and stuff? Yeah, so when you have connection mode open, let me open up my connection mode. Um, over here on the style menu, again on the right, mm -hmm. you can at the very top choose um, sharp, rounded, straight, and curvy. And then you can also go down to the border and choose whatever color you want and choose other fun things like maybe I want it to be dotted and really big. Oh, okay. And whatever you have in connection mode will persist. So if I draw another connector now, it will hold the mode that I just did. Which I like because then I set it, like I like my pink thin line, I just use that. Whenever I open up to do a flow, it always goes to my pink thin line. Um, and these are great, these panels. Um, I don't feel like the affordance in Axure is really good, but you can actually pull these out if you want to see more at a time. Um, and close them and reopen them and put them back in, move them around. If I want to see my styles all the time and my interactions, I can put it above and below, but then you have more scrolling. Can you add a connection point? Can I add a connection point? What do yeah, you like if you're in a box and you want a second, because it usually just wants to go to that preset connection. I know 8 has it, right? You create another point and then you can have the... Like that? Arrow. Yeah. You mean Whatever you, you have. Second, if you want to point it. Exactly. Well. So I'm using, instead of using the default, he's asking if you can like, set up a second point at the bottom. It can do that. You see where the X showed up? He's asking yeah. if you can mainly add another X. I don't think so. And these are full like connections, so I can move it around and it's connected. Mm -hmm. um, I, you can always drag something to it mm -hmm. and maybe not connect it. You just point to it. Um, but if you do that, then it's not actually connected if you need to move it. I've never tried to do that. Yeah, I'm sure can at some point. That's what it is, is a beta. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things is that deep click where you can get to something in the back. I use it all the time. And I was so disappointed because I was going to have to come here and tell you guys, this exists in eight, but it's not in beta yet. They release it on Friday. Yes. <laughs> Every week they're putting out stuff. So if it doesn't do it now, it might do it in a week. All right, um, we do have, let me go back to my default library here, um, a great set of style tools. So right up here, this is actually your full style panel. And so it defaults to Arial. Um, I think I've changed my default yet. My default's Roboto. So you can choose a default font and then all text that you come in will come into that font. You can edit all your styles. Uh, all of that happens in here. You can copy styles from one widget to another widget. So you've got a great style manager. You can actually copy styles from one file to another file. It's a little bit kludgy. Um, but you basically say you're going to import a file. 
and then it has you go through, do you want, what pages do you want to import, what styles do you want to import? So you just skip the pages part of the wizard, import the styles, and then say, okay, it'll just bring in your styles. So you can edit get to that page right there? This is the, like, the little pencil guy right here. And so if I want to create a new style called Lauren Rocks, and I want to make this, <laughs> Know, really annoying. Then I can come to heading one and I can change this to Lauren Rocks. It'll bring my style over. Or I could say, you know, I want this particular heading to actually be pink. And so now you'll notice this little asterisk over here in the style panel. Whoops, well, now I've changed it. Rocks. I'm clicking my, to, to try and show you and it's actually doing things. So see that asterisk? That means I've changed the file from the style sheet. So I can then click update and it'll actually update my style sheet. So let me put another heading here and set it to Lauren Rocks, which is still red. But now I've decided, no, I really want them all to be pink. Then I can hit update, it'll update all the rest of them to be pink too. Ooh. Or you can just leave it as a one-off. That's uh, okay, so that is your, your styles and your style manager, right? Um, and then we've got our, these are pretty standard, I'm not going to go through all of them. Anyone who uses word processing tool understands these, right? Yep, no questions. This is your font color hidden in there. Your bullets, spacing, alignment up and down, fill, background fill, and shadow. And then you've got your border tools. And then I use this a lot um, to get your, kind of your grid spacing. I also tend to, I like to turn on the grid, um, which I usually have mine on, so turning it on and off is a little weird for me. But I have mine set to eight pixel grid because we use material, which is eight pixel snap. Um, but it's really nice to be able to kind of see where things are. And if you have more than one, it will show you, you see those little things like when you're aligned. Um, I'll turn it off because it's hard to look at when we're doing something like this. Um, so you see kind of the, how it, as I'm moving, those red things that pop up and down, when you're really trying to focus on where to put something, it's really nice because it shows you all the different dimensions once something is in alignment through one method or another. Um, let's see, this is your lock function. So let's say I've got an image and I really don't want that image to be skewed, you can lock it here. So that as I um, move it around, it'll skew appropriately. If I change this to 300, it'll change my height too. If I unlock it, then you get the awkward where it, it changed, but it didn't change response. Um, what's the word? Didn't change scale. Thank you proportionally. And then this little eyeball hides things. Now, if you hide something, if you drag something on your artboard and hide it, and you, you feel like it's totally disappeared, it's not yellow like mine, that's because I actually have something turned on in view mode, masks. So I'm masking my hidden object. If I turn that off, now it's really hidden. It's still there. If I go to my outline, I can see it. It's still there. But you don't see like any outline of it at all. I prefer to have masks on because some of my artboards get really complex and I just like lose everything. And so I like to kind of just have that reminder that it's there, but sometimes it can get annoying. So you can turn on and off your masks um, as to whether you want to a reminder that you have something hidden under there. All right, so that gets across the top. Any questions about the top toolbar aside from the share button? Nope, good, yay. All right, so you got your pages and your outlines. That's pretty simple. You can add a new page by hitting plus. You can add a new folder. I like to do folders in my projects. I'll typically have folders for um, things like um, planning files. And so then I'll have, have, go ahead. Sorry, just a question. So in each page, you can have multiple artboards, right? One artboard. One artboard per page. Yes, yeah, each page. So think of it like a web page. Right? If you wanted to do something dynamic, you do it on the page, not in different artboards. Which is a nice benefit because in Sketch, every time you change something, you have a whole copy, right, of that page with the change. Now you just have a page and you make a change. So if I have um, Sketch and I've got three pages, 
because they're all different states and now I realize I need to do something across all three, I have to change it in all three places. Mm -hmm. Here you just change it the whole time. Um, I like to separate my prototypes because again, it's not just prototypes. I put flowcharts in here, I put notes in here, I'll put this in auto mode and I'll have full documents in here with headers, big paragraphs of tasks, you know, all sorts of information so that when I hand this URL to my developers and my project managers and my BAs, everybody uses the same URL and they just go to the folder that has the information that they need. The flowcharts, the notes, the prototypes, whatever. I put everything in here. Um, and then you can also use, on the right hand side, we're skipping interactions for the moment. You've got all your styles and you've also got notes. So this is where I was saying you can take any particular thing and you can put a note on it. This is my heading. I can't spell. And now if I go to preview this and I turn on my notes, I can see over here that this number one is this number one and this is the note. Which, and it calls it out if I click on it. I can also hide my notes somehow. There, show note markers. I can turn that off, and every time I change something, you'll notice that the, you can't see where I'm pointing, the URL at the top, see that note n equals zero, mm -hmm. is changing. So if I want to send a developer a copy of the prototype, I can go straight to that page with my notes, my notes turned on, take that URL and send it to them and say, okay, click through all the tags and see what my notes are and let me know if you have any questions. But then I can turn my notes and my note tags and all that stuff off, get a different URL of the same page, and send it to somebody else, and they're like, okay, here, done, run a usability study. Lauren, I'm assuming that every time you want to send it to someone else, like an actual file, the other person has to also have an actual file. If you only, this, no, because this is a website, right? Crap code, but a website that publishes, and I can send anybody the URL, which I also highly recommend password protecting your stuff if it's corporate, which I'll show you, remind me to show you that. Um, but to edit it, they need action. So anybody can look at it. And they can comment on it. Which, is that open in this one yet? Have you used Action 9 yet for commenting? So if they look at that specific HTML, like on their screen, they would see like that, or with the little note over here. This is the HTML, by the way. You can see it's like crap. Don't use it. iframes and. Um, yeah, they can't, so I apologize because this is, I think, an issue with nine. Let me show you. I'm trying to think what I'm showing you guys. What's this one? It doesn't like you have this kind of a problem, isn't it? Mm. So this is Axure Share 8, and then this is Axure Share 9. See the logo with the colorful X mm -hmm. versus this with the cloud? They're still rolling out Axure Share 9. So there's some things it doesn't do yet. Um, if I go in, let me find some to share with you. You can see how crazy these get. Like here's my documents. Here's my component terminology, my nav terminology, my design stacks. Like, so it's not just prototyping, right? I've got all sorts of other information in here for my developers. And then up here, I have my demo so that people can click through and try out this navigation thing I was creating. Um, now, I can go, so this is the difference in nine, you see everything's kind of happening up here to the right. In eight, I've got things like notes and discussion where anybody, key, no key, whatever, anybody with access can comment on screen and say, I don't like this, it's shit, <laughs> and post it. And then you can turn on an extra share to get an email. So anybody comments on my prototype, it emails me. 
and I can click it and it opens it right up like this and so I can go through them and not have to just know in the background or be checking it all the time that somebody commented on it. And I can go in and reply, mark it resolved, whatever I want to do. Um, and if I exit comment mode, it also, add a comment, I can also go like this and say, this is awesome. And put like a picture of an area and I can, I'm logged in so it puts my name, but if they don't log in, it'll just come through as anonymous. So there's some really nice collaboration tools that you get out of the, the website once you've published it. Um, and then that's where you can see your notes and things like that when you share. And you can add different notes. You can name things, put names in here, um, add maybe I want another piece of text for something else and I want to add a select list and this is going to be assigned Deb, and Bob, and Tom, Anya, whatever. And then when I click this, maybe this is assigned to Bob and this is assigned to Tom and Anya just has a header because she's brand new. And then it all generates out and they can see what's assigned to them. So you can do a lot with the specifications around this. All right, uh, let me close that one, don't save. A quick question, do you plan to do like a quick, maybe prototype or something to do some interaction? Yep, you're gonna do, you're gonna do one. Right, but you're gonna, we're gonna do that? Yes, I promise. Great, great. I just wanna make sure you know where everything is. Yeah. Get antsy, aren't you? I like it. All right, so, uh, what have we not covered? The libraries and the masters. So your libraries actually comes with this default, the flow, and the icons. All by them, you get all of that out of the box. Icons are images, so if you want to change the color, you just change the color. Um, you can bring in font awesome, awesome icons through um, web fonts, which I can show if you want to. Do, if we have time later, I can show you guys how to do that. Um, default has all sorts of great things that come in and work automatically, so if I go to like drop down list, I want options, I double click it, and I can add my list items, and hit okay, hit preview, and I've got a working drop down list. It's kind of a funny looking one, but it works automatically, so you don't have to code anything special to get those things to work. Text boxes, repeaters are its own class, that's a little complicated, play with it if you, if you want to, but we're not gonna get into that today. Um, these create menus. Snapshot is if you have maybe another page where you want to reference other parts of your prototype, you can drag in Snapshot and I gotta remember, figure out where they put it in this one. I want to show the home page and there's my home page in a different page so I can put notes and things like that if you want to do spec notes within your prototype. And you've got sticky notes and markers, all sorts of good things. If you wanted to create, um, let's see, Let's do, let's create something. Um, let's say I wanted to create um, a phone app, right? So go ahead and let's create a home page. And let's create a sign up page. And an about page. So you're gonna create your pages, and then you're gonna go into your style panel without anything selected, and set whatever phone you wanna create this to. I'm gonna use the Galaxy S9. I can't even like, rename it. Um, you can double click, it's kind of a soft click, so press, kind of press for a second and let go. Or just hit right click and hit rename. Anybody else? Yeah, Make sure you're in pages. Well, you can rename outline layers too. Mm -hmm. They got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you make the little bigger page? Yes, we can. That? Yeah, the only idea, so. Can you see everything else? I can try a different resolution. A little bit bigger? The, mm -hmm. the actual product? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
it's not a it's not a browser. It's just the product itself. So I have to make the display the resolution. Yes. Of course. I don't know why it's not. to one, and I can change that to zero right there and hit OK. 
And now any new shape I, I bring out will not have, well that's a box that's different. Any new shape I create will not have a border. Um, I'm going to take text. You can, I tend to just pull from here because I'm used to it and then change it to however I want it to look. But you can also hit T for text or use the quick menu here. So hitting T, you see that the cursor changes between text and pointer. So while the T is showing, I can just create my text. on those pages that I have it in my master. If you wanted it to be somewhere else, you could specify where that would be. And I want it to show up just right where it is. I don't need to hide, so I'm not going to send it to back. And I don't want it to show up if it's already there. Don't add it again, so I'm going to keep that checked and say OK. Now if I go back to my home page, there's my header. Sign up page has it, and about page has it. Now if I go to my header file, I can change this be whatever new color I want, and then there it is, everywhere. It's like you're creating a, a scene. Exactly. I screwed up. <laughs> okay, tell me where you think you went wrong, because it'll be learning for somebody. I'm I was sure. like, I cut it, and then. And it lost it. Yeah. <laughs> um, go back to the page where you initially created it, and hit Command Z, and you, you, it might take you back. Nope, didn't save it. Just go to Masters and create a new one. So if you create a new master file, make sure you have Masters instead of Libraries selected. And hit the plus button. No, oh, but something like seriously went wrong. I <laughs> have like... <laughs> Alright, Shane's going to come to have like, a look at it. No screen. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm changing me also the code. I don't know why. In the pages. Oh, it may change the page color. So this is a linked symbol. So it is linked to the master. So if I try to change something in this, you notice it's not letting me click the text or anything because I'm on, I had dropped in. It's a symbol. It's it's linked. Perfect, but it's not the same color that, that I have in the master. I mean, the modified color. Do you want to take a look? I can, unlink it. So you went to the masters and then you hit plus and then it I pasted it. I opened the master and I pasted it. So I had an initial in my home page. I had an initial, I'll just show you with another one. The, uh, so I have a box. This is my box. I've now realized I'm going to use this box a lot of different places. 
So you could no, copy and paste, you could cut however you want to bring it. Yeah. So I cut, I did the hand X. So it's in my clipboard right now. I went to Masters, created a new master there in my box. There so and then opened it and I went to Command V and paste it. So it's now been cut off of the page where I printed it. Went into my clipboard for holding. And then pasted it into pieces. Now this is my box can be right click and add it, or I can just go to a page and drag it in like a symbol. And every time it's that box. So it's got that kind of red hue. Because it's not actually on this page, I could put another box on this page. It's part of this master, it's linked. So that's why I have this breakaway lock to master. Right. If I want to, I can break away, which unlinks it. So now I've got two boxes on this page, and one box that's the master. So if I go to my box here, and I change it to blue, and I go back to home, only that one that's still linked is blue. The one that I broke away didn't change, because I broke it away from the master. I, I do that. You made that master one I think before you had to tell the master, I want it to be pasted in the same place. You can. It was. Yeah, you can, or you can, you can choose. Check box, right? Yeah, so if I go um, add to pages, I could say put it on this page, and I specifically on that page, I want it to be at 10, 20 over. And so I say, okay, now I'm going to go to the about page, and it's right where I want it to go. Cool. Yeah. But now we can go into the master. Alright, delete that. So, the question, right. so when, you, yeah. when you create, when you are facing in the master, right? Is there a way to also, do we need to resize that board to an S9 or? No, open so your master is always just the. Open camera. Yeah, and you can put whatever you want on it. Um, yeah, it doesn't, I don't even think you can. Set. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, it's, think of it like just a simple library. It's just an artboard so you can go wherever you want with it, and then you're dragging it. It's like creating a local library. And it seems like you're jumping through a lot of hoops and something simple, but you just saved yourself the other thousand times you have yeah. to go ahead and change that. Can you put that in juice? Yeah, I'm going to show, actually, we'll do that next. I'll show you a fun little trick with this. I'm looking through my, um, my pages and they don't change very So if you go to home and then you go to here and you change this, it doesn't show change at home? No, I mean like just switching. So you see like this is Here. Yeah. 
You know, that's like what's world. All right, so see here, base is 600. So if I drag this onto my base, and on 600, I actually want it to be down here. This is like perfect for my then I can go back and forth. And then if I get preview, depending on the size of my screen, see how it moved once I went below 600? So you can design a low resolution and then have that whole design adapt to a different resolution. Okay. All right, so bring it back together. Does anybody not have it? I can show it again. Everybody has it? Show it again? Yep. All right. So I'm going to, I'm actually, here's a new tip for you guys. I can actually remove it from my pages and select all. See, okay, so now I'm back to start. So I have a blank home page, a blank sign up page, and a blank about us page. So is there like a point where like it shows you where it's already applied with master? Or do you just like click whatever one to see? Can you see where it's already applied? You might be able to see that in that remove. It might show you, it might check it. Um, yeah, th that's why I asked this because I didn't see like a sort of like status on you know, which where it's had applied. It. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll look when I open it back up. Okay, so starting from scratch for anyone who has questions, I'm going to create a new header. Master, right? Everything's blank at this point. I'm going to double click. I know I'm in the right place because my tab is, says header, which is the master just created. I'm going to go to libraries and I'm going to create my header. I'm not sure what size I want, right? Because I want it to match. So I like to go here first and create it on a page. And that way I can make sure I've got the right size. So I definitely want it to be that wide and that tall. And then I cut it or copy it. So I'm going to cut it. I did Command X. I think you could also cut here. Go into my blank master. So everything's blank, but I have that rectangle on my clipboard. And I can paste. So there's my rectangle. I know it's all the right size, but my pages are blank. So I'm going to go to my rectangle, make it pretty just like I like it with the color, go to my library, grab some text, and make that pretty just like I like it, and change the font color to white. And now I still just have a master file, but these are blank. Now I want to add this to those pages. There's two ways you can add it. I can click on the home page and actually drag it over and put it wherever I want. So now I have it on the home page. Or I can right click on the master and add it to pages and choose all three. Now to your question, how do I know where I already have it? Well, I just put it on the home page, so it's already there. So this is going to add it again, unless I say only add if the page does not already have it. Now I click OK, it's going to add it to this page and this page, but it's not going to add it here again because it was already there. Okay. So I did that, mm -hmm. but so it's adding it below my original master. So it's not changing the color like a symbol of the original header that I had. You so might not so have. So I created the master and then I put the master in yellow. So let's see. Yeah. So this is So you've got three pages, right? Most of us have three pages with three headers. And the header says header or whatever. Yeah, good. The header says heading or whatever you call it on every single page. But let's say I want it to say the name of the page on every page, right? So I hit preview right now. And I open up over here. And I can click through my pages. They all say heading two. They all work. Test that. Make sure. Test your hip preview. Click on the little menu icon here to get to your pages. And make sure all your pages have heading or whatever you called it. Everybody good? Good. Okay. So now I'm, now I'm going to get tricky. All right. 
What if like your other pages do not have the header? The same, they just have the header? But they just don't have the same style as the home page. Like, do you have to go back in there and find each page and make the It depends on why it doesn't have the same style. If it doesn't have the same style because you changed it on that page or because the master isn't there. Oh no, the header is there. The problem is the size of the no, artboard. Oh, okay. Maybe I need to like go just change the artboard on. The, the, the header doesn't have an artboard size. Exactly. But the other pages all have them the same. So I have to go into the each page. page. Yeah. And each page without anything selected set the right page dimensions. Okay. Okay. Set text. 
and it's going to ask me, what do you want to set the text on? Thankfully, we've named our widgets. So we can see the shape and the title. And as I hover over those, you can see it kind of highlights it in my prototype as well. I want to change the text on my title. So I'm going to click title. And now you're going to see this is all set up for you, right? What it did is that just took me through filling out this box. So on page load, I'm going to set the text of the title, which is right now the value heading to. Right? It brought in what it currently says. Whatever yours currently says, that's what it says is the current value. We're all together? Okay. Nope. It's okay. So I'm just going to say okay and leave it at that. Right? It's just. So what did we do? Absolutely nothing. It's not going to change anything right now. When the page loads, when the page first fires, it's going to look for that text, text title, and it's going to change it to heading 2, which is what it currently says. So you're not going to see anything happen. You could change it to say something else. So let me click it and say, ta-da. Okay, done. So now, when the page loads, it's going to look for your text title, which is what we've named this guy, and it's going to change it to say, ta-da. So if I hit preview, this says heading two right now, right? I hit preview, page is going to load, and it's going to change the text. Does that make sense? One little tip. You don't have to hit preview if you have two monitors. If your browser's already yes. off, you could just refresh it hit refresh. and show the Hit changes. save and hit refresh. Yeah, hit save and then refresh and you'll see the changes. Otherwise, you'll get like she has. Yeah, I, I end up with like 500 tabs because every time you hit preview, it creates yeah. another tab and it's a bad habit I have. You have a tab open already, just so, hit save and refresh. The question mm -hmm. How do I bring back my panels? I forget. There's just a Go to here. view. And then go to panes, and you should have library master interaction notes okay. dialogue. Yeah. Okay. So that, did that get you where you needed? Uh, it does not, yeah. Okay. I'm like, I'm just used to icons doing it. Um, is there a, it's a loose pane. I just want, I want to put it back. Dock in, it? Yeah. yeah. So if I take the style over here, it's kind of, Right? It's like a loose pane that's annoying me. Um, and if I close it, now I'm really like, oh, it's gone. I've lost it forever. Um, I can go to panes. I can turn it back on. Style. It's still right where I was when I closed it. Yeah. When you um, drag it, as you hover over areas you can dock it, you see that green that shows up? Okay. I keep mine over here. And so I'm going to just move around until I get that pipe in between interactions and notes. And then I let go, and it's back in. All right. Does everyone have ta-da? Mm -hmm. OK, so we're going to get a little fancier. We're going to take this little FX icon. Get it? FX? Effects? Yeah. Okay. I found that funny. And click it, and you get this edit text pop-up. Now here is where you can insert variables. So I want it to do something for me. I don't want to tell it what to type. I want it to do it automatically. I'm going to get rid of ta-da. How did you get there again? Yep. Click on. So you've got your value. So let me actually come out of this so I can. All right. So I'm not on anything. I go to the interactions pane. I go to my page load. Open it up if it's closed. And it says title, set to text, ta-da or whatever you've named it. Mm -hmm. Right to the end of Tada, I'm going to click on this FX. Oh, okay. And that's going to open this edit text. Okay? Cool. And I'm going to get rid of it. Mine has like a little thing at the top saying nothing selected. Nothing selected. Yeah, I don't know It's fine. It's working great. It's just has that little thing. Yeah. Do you want to look, Mike, and see what her nothing selected is? I'm just curious. All right, so in here we've deleted this, so we have nothing, and then insert variable or function. And it's going to give you a whole menu of cool shit this thing can do for you. And we're going to go down, it probably looks like this, here it says, you can find where it says page, and open it up, and click on page name. You could also search for it up here. 
And if you don't want to search at all, you can just type it like that. But when you're done, it should look like that. So you've either clicked this to get to it, or you've just typed it in in brackets, if you happen to know that variable exists. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Did you get to the edit text window? Yep. So let me cancel up here. So um, I'll just put myself somewhere totally different, okay? So now I'm going to double click on my header master. And so I double check through the tab. I'm, I'm in that. Because sometimes it's hard to tell what page you're actually in. Um, and I'm going to click on the text. Oops, so sorry. Skip that stuff. Don't click on anything. Uh, you have your page load on interactions. Yeah. And you open up that interaction. You can click that right there. Okay. Yeah. And it should say target is text title. Um, that's what you're affecting. And I've got this set again. to is text because you could set it to other things. Uh -huh. I'm setting it to text. Okay. And values to DAW and I click on effects mm -hmm. on the right. Uh, and it opens up the ability to do fun things with your text. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to delete that and insert a variable. You can type to search, or you can just browse and search. You're looking for page name. And when you're done, it should say page name in brackets. So by this step, what are we trying to achieve? All right, so let me show you that. <laughs> Lauren, I could stop yep. one second. Some people are kind of getting lost because we have touch screens and touch pads and you're zooming. And you might be zoomed in somewhere else you can't find your stuff anymore. If you click this button right here, that crosshair will bring you back to zero, zero. So if you actually have to yeah. zoom in. If you're over right here, here, look at your ruler. And if you're in the thousands, you probably can't see your stuff. You can't set a size for that, like the, the same form mm -hmm. size for others? Set a what? A, like the, the, you chose a same form, right? I think that's because of the data. Uh, yeah. Because I have to right now set it to every page. Now in the header, there is no size. The header is just space to create things that you want to put on pages. Um, but for the page itself, I have to set the page size on every page. One reason you might not want to use adaptive views, because you can do adaptive, which could be adaptive as well. And if you set the page size on the master. Then it would only be that, yeah. You want your master to be flexible. No, I understand. That's what I was trying to do, I was zooming around. Okay. So what we've done is, the first thing we did was we created a header, right? And we made sure that we put a header and a mouse, and we put that master on every page. Then we told it when the page loads, change that text to say, ta-da, right? Now we've said in the page loads, change that text to the title of the page. So if I hit preview, this is my home page. This is my sign up page. This is my about page. So instead of manually typing in the name of the page on every single page, it automatically does it for me. So I could create 50 pages, and I don't have to go in there and type the name of the page on every single page. I have a header that will automatically go into every single page and pull in the title of the page for me. So it's all about reducing your work. So it's actually identifying what I've named my page mm -hmm. and it's trying to do that Exactly. So if I come in here and I go to my pages and I decide, you know, we actually don't want an About Us page, this is going to be our gallery. And now I preview it. Now I have a gallery page. I think this is the first time we got a lot of surprised faces. In this. <laughs> wow. That's why we're using it. This is why we're using it, right? <laughs> to reduce your work. So if you were in Sketch, you would have three artboards and every one of them would be static. Yeah. Right? And so if you change the page name, you change it everywhere. Or you do something that affects you do it everywhere. By using variables, you do it in one place. If I want to change this header now, I go here. I don't know. I want it to be a whole different font. I don't want it to be a different color. And I want to add um, an icon to it. Maybe for something or other. Gorgeous. Done on all three files. I didn't have to do it three times. And there's my tab problem. See, I just open tabs every time. You don't have to do that. Just go back to your tab and hit refresh. Set higher. Okay. Uh, we should be getting a text any moment for food.
Um, so if you go into your preview mode, this little guy over here with the X, this console, will show you what's happening in the background. So I can start a trace, and I can go to different pages, and you can see on page load, event triggered, and it set the text of the title to the page name. Do you need to do this? No. But it's good to know it's there, because if you try to do it and it's not working, you can go into the console and see like, oh, it's not running at all, or I've messed something up, or whatever. You can see what's happening every time you move around. My trace doesn't have that. Weird. Is it working? Okay. Yeah, you have to start it. You have to start watching it. Yeah. <laughs> and you can clear it and you can stop it. And this onload variable is nothing. It's just the whole actor always gives you one default variable. It's just there by default. You can get rid of it. It's nothing to do with the page that you created. So what's the functionality for the tricks? What's the It's just basically telling you the dynamic PHP and JavaScript that's running in the background. So it lets you check your functionality. All right. So we've got dynamic pages. Now let's see. Let's create. Uh, we got home page gallery. We actually went for our project to have um, a gallery page, a detail page, and a login page. So we're going to rename those. Gallery. Detail and login. And look, all your screens were just updated. How fancy. Gallery, detail, and login. So now let's say you want a footer. Same concept. We're going to go to our masters, create a new master, call it footer. And now this time I'm going to create one from scratch. So I'm going to double click on my footer. So it should be totally blank. And I'm going to hit R to get a rectangle. Let me see my cursor, how it changes back and forth so I know I'm in the right mode. When it's white with the little rectangle to the bottom corner of it, you're in the right mode. I'm just going to drag a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to hit R, drag a rectangle. Now I have mine, I don't know if you guys remember, I took my border off. So. Right, so the footer, where do you, you set it up? Are they, are they top the same as the header? Just, uh, yeah, we're going to do, we'll approach this one differently. Same idea, but so you can get used to doing it in different ways. So just create a brand new master called footer. Uh, it doesn't matter what I said there. Yep. After I did the new, the new yep. So we should all have a box on a new master called footer. And we're going to set the width of that box to 360 if you're using a Galaxy 9 like I am. And I'm going to set the height to 100. Now, if you have this lock closed and blue, as you change the height and width, it's going to change the height and width to get the right ratio. So unlock it so you can make sure it's 360 and 100. Okay? I'll wait for it. I'm to catch up. Pick a color. It's a footer. I'm going to make mine gray. I'm in the dark colors. All right, so we have a box on our footer master. And it's three, the lock is unclicked. And it's 360 and 100. Now I'm going to go back to one of these pages. And I'm going to try and see, if you go all the way down here, you see this bar? That's where it scrolls. Anything beneath that will start a scroll. So that's one page of your phone. Right? So if I scroll out, that's the size of a Galaxy S9. A 
that's 740 pixels down. So if I hover over that bar, you see how that lights up over here? 740 pixels down. You won't see that bar if you're looking at a master. You have to look at one of your Yeah, I'm in, I'm in one of my pages. I'm in the gallery, right? So I do have a footer. It's just a box sitting there. I haven't done anything with it. I went into my gallery to see where the bottom of my page was. And it's at 740. So I go back into my footer, and this is 100 pixels high, and I want it to sit right at the foot, right? So I'm going to take this, highlight it, and change my X and Y, and I'm going to, what's 100 minus 740? Perfect. The opposite of 740 minus 100. You know what I mean. <laughs> and I'm going to set it like that. And now it's lost on my screen because my screen's big, but if I scroll out a little bit, you can see it down there. It's at 0, 640. So this is how you would do it if you're not copying and pasting. I like copy and paste because I just set it where I want it on the page, and then I take it out of the page and throw it in a master, and then I have it where I want it everywhere. But you could also just create it from scratch on the master. So how do you realign, uh, how do you reposition? This, I just did up here using these guys, oh, okay. my X and Y. Okay. So instead of dragging it around, I knew right where I wanted it. If you don't know where you want it and you want to feel it out, you could create it, like last time, on a page, right? You want to kind of feel out where it's going to live. You can come onto the page and create it and say, you know, I want it right there. And then copy and cut. And then copy and cut, yeah. Which is what I typically do because then it makes me feel. And then when you hit paste, it puts it right there on your master. So I don't have to kind of think about where it's sitting. Or you can do little crutches. Little helpful things like create a rectangle the size of your phone screen yeah. in the master just to let you kind of know where it is and then delete the rectangle. Yep. But you don't want to think about the master as being associated to a screen size. It's just a library of things that it's could be anywhere. Alright, so now that I have my footer, I'm going to add to pages and I'm going to add it to all my pages. Now when I go to my gallery, I have my footer. And you saw on the previous screen it said lock to location in master. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's showing up exactly where it is in the master. Same thing will happen if you drag it onto a page. If you've got it set for that lock to master, you drop it in the same place no matter where you are on the page. You drag it back to its best fixed position, it will drop it right Which you can do on a master. Well, yeah. I, I just, it would be nice if maybe. So yeah. Still, it's well, still it's like just, you'll need to make it, okay, so, no, 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 but it's a good thing to show. So for people who want to watch this, this is like, this is a tip, quick tip. Don't follow along, just tip. Um, in my header, you can do this thing where I, I copy the whole thing and right click and say create a dynamic panel. Once I've done that, to edit it now, I have to go into that panel. Think of it like a master under the master, right? I've gone another level deeper. But what it gives me is the ability to also right click and say pin to my browser. And I'm going to pin it to the top and keep it in front. So now if I go to my gallery, I can do cool things like this. So I'm going to put that up here. I'm going to put this down here just to give me something to scroll. Oh, hold on. I think that's a food. Hello? Yes. No worries, that's fine. Great, thanks. Bye bye. Food will be here in 10 minutes for those of you that are hungry. All right, so I'm putting two just whatevers so I can scroll. When I hit preview, opening another tab, see how it hid beneath there? You know, sometimes you want to lock things to the top? That locked it. All right? So if I don't do that, if I go into my master and I unpin, hit preview, now the whole thing scrolls. So pinning it keeps it at the top if you want something to scroll behind it. So it's just a side tip for those of you who are ready for it. Yeah, take that in vision. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> a lot of drinks. <laughs> okay, so we should all be, let me take out my lovely little decorations here.
we should all have a dynamic header that changes the page title based on the page that we're on and a footer. It's just a box, however you decorate it. And when you can scroll down, you notice it doesn't scroll past. Whatever that screen size is, it won't scroll past it unless there's something else under it to see. It won't just scroll infinitely. It respects the size of one screen. All right, so we're going to create our gallery. This is subjective. However you create your gallery, I'm sure it's beautiful. It doesn't need to look like mine. Mine is not beautiful. Mine is just what I did in the afternoon that I worked on it. So if you want cards that look like mine, go for it. You don't have to. But we're going to create three things. You can name them, do it however you want. Totally subjective. If you want to just create three boxes and leave it at that, that's fine too. You don't need to do all this. Um, to get to the images, that file uh, link, that bit.ly that we shared earlier, there's an image folder in there with all sorts of monsters. Pick whatever monsters make your heart happy. Um, if you go into the library here, this little icon, you can add an image folder, and wherever you've saved it, I don't even know where I saved it, desktop, workshop, there's my images, there's my photos, what's this? Oh, that's something else. Click on my photos that I downloaded, I hit open and look, there they are. So I've got now, I've got my libraries and I've got my photos. So I can just drag and drop them onto the page. They are pretty big. Most of them I downloaded at 600, I think, by whatever Aww. that is. I know, right? It's so cute. <laughs> uh, but there are a couple guys in there that came across. See how it says 640 on the name? And this one says 1920. Mm -hmm. 1920, 640. These are big. It'll ask you, do you want to optimize this? Because it's big. Wait, how do we get the library on there again? Yep. Just go to this little um, stack, box mm -hmm. stack thing, and click on it, and then choose the folder. So from that bit.ly actor, that took you to a shared drive where you could download um, mm -hmm. Little Monster Guys. Wherever you save that folder, just click on that, and it'll give you a. Uh, whoops, no. It'll give you all the images, and then you can drag them on like widgets. So this is great if you have like a visual designer you work with, or somebody who has assets that you want to use, or assets you want to use a lot, like a logo for your company. You can just load it in, and then always drag and drop it where you need it. So what about the common elements? We can create assets for that. And the images, the cards, we can create a master for that? Yeah. I did, um, I actually just dragged them on. But yeah, I would, if I were going to do more than these three, like a real project where I'm going to probably have lots of them, I would create a master for it. Um, so over here, let me go into the file we're working with today. If you go into your library and change it to default, what I did is I just brought a box. Okay. And then I changed the fill to nothing. And I have my box to default without a border, but you can turn the border off. And then I went over here to outer shadow. I turned the shadow on. And I set it to 0, 2 on the x, y with a 10 pixel blur. Again, this is subjective. Do it however it makes your heart happy. You can make your shadow red and massive. We're not handing this in to your project manager. Um, and I lightened it a little bit. And then there was my card. And then you could create a master, so you can drag and drop the same card. I just used the Alt button. I think everybody's on a Mac. If you hold the Alt button and drag, it'll create another duplicate right away. So I held Alt and just dragged down three more. I'm sorry, how do you do that? Uh, if you hold the Alt button, oh, okay. the uh, Alt option, sorry, option. And then click on anything, like I can click on my header and drag, and I get a demo, another header. It's just a quick copy paste, basically. A copy paste works. Yep. Copy paste works too. But think in your mind, you want to immediately create a master of that, right? Because you're going to be using it more than once. Yep. And let's say we want to change the drop shadow. Oh, yeah. Copy paste, you have to change the drop shadow on all three by selecting all, do a multiple select, yeah. but with a master. You can, you can just change. Now, even with the master or without the master, let's say I'm just fiddling. I don't know. I'm playing. I like this. I like that. Um, maybe I like it more like this, right? And I want to add it to the other two. Maybe this is a one-off where it wasn't worth a master. 
but there is more than one. And now I want the other two to look like the first one. I can copy, and then I can go to this one and right click and paste the style. And so that way you don't have to go figure out the, what, what, you know, what shadow did I use on that one again? What color did I use on that one? You can just right click and paste the style. So Lauren, can you paste a style onto a different type of object, like from the yes. style of a rectangle yep. to, the, to a circle? Yeah. Can you select from one and paste to multiple at the same time? I don't do it that often. Let's see. We'll make it really pretty. Gorgeous. Copy. Paste. Stop. Wow. Nice. I'm just undoing. Control Z. So if you don't have a master, that's an easy way to, to take whatever you're doing. But in the case of the circle versus the rectangle, you don't create a master rectangle to right. make a circle. So let me, good, good point. Let me go back to that gorgeous. Christmas light thing I've got going on. If I drag a circle over and I paste style, it pastes the style properties. It doesn't affect what it is. I could also do it with text. And it's just going to paste the style properties, which is a background with this shading. Um, do they still have? Ah, you took out the. In eight, you need to change the shape. I don't have it in one. Yeah. Maybe in style. It's an abomination of different So in eight, there is an option to change the shape. It might be in the menu. It's transform shape. It's down there. Oh, no, it's not there anymore. Select shape. Aha. So they used to have a quick menu. It's probably a beta thing. Um, so if I right click, um, and select a shape, I can take my circle and make it into something else. I could also um, double click on the line, if I can get it right, there. And I can add Bezier paths and turn it into whatever I want. I know, right? I'm a beautiful designer. It's like Christmas sweets. Woo! It changes, it respects my gradient as I move. That's cool. Yeah, well, let's get rid of all that fun. Wow. <clears throat> on the box, can you still uh, just... Is it, okay, it's still thing on the corner for the radius. You can back up pretty far, by the way. Yeah, if I maybe you want to, if you go to style properties, you have all sorts of options, right? We've got our location size, rotation. Um, you've got your style here. So I copy and paste the style, but I can also set a style in my style sheet. So that if I want to use it later, I can come back and pull that style. You can change the opacity. There's my typography. There's my fill, my border, my thickness, and pattern visibility. Maybe I just want a border to show up on the bottom, like a line, even though it's a box. I don't have a border, so you can't see it. There. So how is that different than, I'm trying to understand, would it be better to create something in style, or would it be better to create something that designs this? Depends. Okay. I say it's an it depends. I feel like Action provides you four or five levels of styling, right? Okay. The first level is I created a pretty box and I'm copying and pasting style to another pretty box. It doesn't exist anywhere else but those pretty boxes. The second level would probably be the style sheet. So I create two pretty boxes and I go over here and actually create a style called pretty box. And then I can go to any other object I want and apply that style. Yeah, the, that makes sense. Yeah, the third level would probably be I created a master. And then as you just drag and drop it, not even have to worry about styles, assuming it's one object. Okay. And then the fourth level will probably be I'm going to create a library, and I can pull that library into multiple projects. So it just depends. Is this like a one-off? Is this yeah. something I use all the time? Other people are going to use it. So there's lots of different levels. Um, beta does not yet have a team, uh, but the eight does, and so they're going to come out with it, where I can create this as a new team project. And we should do a workshop for that alone. Because once it's a team project, you and I can work on the same file and check in and out changes. And then that the collaboration is fantastic. Because it's not like, what version of Sketch were you using? And was this your V9 project on version 52 of Sketch? Or I can't get it to open on my You just open the team project, check out the file, make your changes, write some notes on what you did, and check it back in. 
The other great thing is when you do a team project, that version history is every thing. So if my project manager says, that design that you did three months ago, can we go back to that? I can not only go back to it, I can save it off as a separate version so I don't lose what I'm working on, and I can see all the changes that we've done, everybody's checked in, like it, it controls the whole thing. It's awesome. Sometimes I use it just for solo projects because it keeps all my work. All right. So you guys should have these beautiful boxes. Are you there? I've heard the clicking slow down. I was yapping. I'm sorry. They're so happy. <laughs> um, and something else I did is I just kind of sized these guys to where I thought it looked nice. This is what a visual designer would be doing. I'm not a visual designer. Um, and you can right click and crop image and then bring these in because it is a transparent background and hit crop. And that way when you're clicking on it, you don't have that big blank back transparent area that you're constantly dealing with. So like if I don't crop this one, then every time I'm trying to click around, I'm gonna be hitting that box. Right? So you just um, select the image, right click, and hit crop. And it puts you in a cropping mode. So you can see this whole kind of border. I'm in cropping mode now. And then I can just drag in that transparent part of the image I don't want to deal with accidentally hitting. And hit crop. And now I just, it's just less stuff to deal with. Nobody woke up in a cropping mode today. Oh. <laughs> shopping website, and then I found these, I was like, no, that's happening. Um, and I'm going to make this one a little different than my other one, just to emphasize the fact that you guys can totally don't feel the need to copy the way that I've done this. Um, so I'm using my default menu to create my text. And so I'm going to make... You just click on library, you go to our library. Yeah, right under library. label object on the... Uh, you can name them, you can not name them. If you bring over the paragraph from the default library, it'll just automatically perform it submit for you. You can also go to insert text and draw a block, and it'll fill that block with more MIPSUM as well. If I, hit, if I hit T, then I can draw a text block, so fill it with, with text, based on however big, fills it with dummy text. Now, if you talk to somebody who's good at copy, they will tell you, don't use Learn Mipsum in your prototypes. Because that may, the actual text may be wider, it may be shorter, you can't plan for it. Try and understand the actual text that's going to go into the space that you're designing for. That's just a UX tip but um, we're not worried about that today. So you guys know how to create masters. I'll let you guys decide what you want to master and what you don't, because I feel like this gives you a chance to kind of play with it and get to know it, but you understand hopefully now what masters are and how they work. And in your default library, as you scroll around in there, there's all sorts of stuff. One of them is also button. Uh, at some point, somewhere on your pretty prototype, each monster that you add, it could be three, it could be five, it could be one, but you need a button, which is going to allow you to go to the detailed page of your pretty monster. For the buttons, again, should we create a monster because then you want to resize it or something like that? Okay. Yeah. I'm doing lazy prototyping right now. I'm doing same. Yeah. Copy but so you know, yeah. Like as you're getting, for, and I think that goes back to my point from the very beginning. Don't overdo it just because you can. Right. If you're creating a quick prototype, you're sitting next to a BA, and you just want to throw something out. Don't create all these masters. Yes. They're gonna, you're gonna lose them. You know, go back and fix it later if you need to create something larger. But for the time being, just you know. Fresh it up. Yeah. Don't overdo it just because you can. 
if you don't need to. But after a year, you'll have masters for all these one-offs, and so you won't, you know, you just drag your button that you used for the last one-off. Once you get where you want to be on your gallery, take it as far as you want, then you're going to create a detail page for one of your monsters. And so, is this all a HTML and CSS, or how full is your speech when you generate the code to? Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not code you would use. It will generate the JavaScript too, but the JavaScript yeah. is nothing you want a developer to take. It really is not particularly good. Well, no, no, the, the, my, my question is that maybe, I mean, if I leave it to some developer, they may be tempted to the, the code somehow. Okay, how, how, what happened? I mean, what happened is <laughs> someone goes to, okay, and okay, it's going to crash, I mean, what's going on? No, it won't crash. It's just not. It's, it's not good code, code, and the JavaScript that's using really is not like. If they were developing a lot like a form, they'll be tying in it uh, into the backend database, doing a post or a JSON or doing something. This is not doing it. It's mocking it up so it looks like it's doing it. So if they try to reuse it, it just it's really not going to work very well. Plus, it's straight JavaScript, and most people are going to be using React, Angular, jQuery, or something else. So. Anytime a developer looks at this, you just hammer. Do not, this is for demo purposes to show you ways. Do not reuse this code or try to reuse it. It'll cause up so many problems in the long run. Not for you, but for them. Yeah. You know. Okay. It'd so, be like creating an architect, if you build a house, an architect creates a model, right? Like a little model toy house. It'd be like taking the cardboard off the toy house and trying to build a real house with it. It's just for the model. It is not to be used by real developers. <laughs> so in your organization, everybody has to be on the same page that your job is to design the UX of something and communicate how it's supposed to be developed. And this is a prototype to communicate the interactivity, but hopefully your boss's boss doesn't say, well, if he's doing that work anyway, how come he's not just generating the front end code for us? Yeah. This tool isn't for doing that. It's to produce an, an interactive prototype, not a MVP. So quick note on your okay. detail. Make sure your image, your monster, has got its own fixed space wherever you're going to put it. Because uh, we're going to create a gallery. So you need a room to slide back and forth between different monsters. So we need to... Hello? When they cost you hey, is the food here? Okay, great. Thanks so much. We'll be right down. So, question. I'm trying to add a catalog item master to the gallery page. Okay. So you've got. Look at that. Uh, so this is the most popular yeah. Yeah. Oh, you called this catalog. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to add it to yeah. the gallery. Yeah. So you would just put yeah. gallery. It's not Google Slides. Yeah. Is it going there? Oh. oh, it's just being funny. Oh, the other thing you can do is you've got a one off. You if you go into the gallery, you can just add it. Don't like actually put it right where you want it. Now, the so only thing it, about having the in there, you can go in and um, instead of just creating a box, is constant. because these are maximized, now you have two identical ones. Up, and if you change, want it to be different, change, 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 change. you have to Put break it away exactly. and then change the image, but now it's no longer attached to the master. So if you really think about what do I want unique and what do I want, you know what I mean? Well, um, well box, you could create an individual master for the button, for sure. well, button, an individual master for the box, and so then you always have the same background, and then you always have the same button, but then your individual copy is different. Yeah. That's like with Laurel Ipsum, the same thing is 
they'll hammer you on the text. Well, no. It's just form it's just text. Well, that's not real text. Fine, I'm looking at real text. And then they'll sit there and go, well, I'm not sure that's the right text. Yeah, and it's like, you're missing the point of the conversation. Yeah, exactly. And you go, okay, we're going to do that. And you set up masters here, set up whatever. Okay, you want to change the description of monster one? And it's on 15 different pages? Fine. I'll change the description of monster one and the master, and we'll change everywhere. So let me show you. In eight, in eight, there's a feature that's not in nine yet that I think is very important to be aware of. If my eight will open, so you can see how different they are. So this is eight, right? See all the gray, uh, and then this is nine. So in eight, I could drag things on. I can make my pretty prototype. And see how it's straight and it's lined up. Let me find a button. Where's my button? I passed it. Button. Right? And it's all pretty. But I can also go into style and I can add a sketch effect. I can say I want this to be sketchy and gray and use um, kind of a sketchy font. I don't have actually in here, do I? Maybe like this. And then I hit preview. I can't really see it. But basically, it takes a high five prototype and it turns it into more of a sketch. It turns a gray scale and makes things a little fuzzier. And so you can show that first. And then once you have buy in, you can turn your sketch effect off and put it back in color and just show the high five because sometimes people get too attached to the colors and to the text and things like that. That's but they just don't have sketch effect in nine yet. That's a UX tip. Your job as a UX person is communicating your knowledge to somebody else and getting them to agree it's correct. You may be the smartest UX person and it's a really great site, but if the next person has a different opinion and that's all they have, they're going to think that you're just having an opinion too. So the most difficult part of UX is communicating. And what Lauren just said is sometimes it's good to present a sketchy looking wireframe so that they you're on the same page. We're just getting the placement and interactive conversation. If you made it pretty, your CEO is going to be talking about colors for an hour and a half and not getting your point. And that's what Axure can help with is some of this interactivity that really proves the point. People have to see that. You can't do that in some other tools if it's just pages. If you're working in a tool that shows pretty pictures, the conversation with your CEO is going to be how pretty the page looks. And they're going to be making color changes and the website's not, not going to be good. So uh, that's the point of having some of these variables is that you can put data into Axure and have it actually behave. And sadly, I say this, uh, everybody has eyes. So everybody thinks they're a designer. Everybody has a brain. So they all think they're a psychologist. And UX is design plus psychology. So UX is, in some sense, a crappy career and that everybody thinks they have their own opinion. So your job is to communicate something so powerfully that you win them over. And that's why sometimes this extra work you have to put in helps them get something in their mind's eye. Because if they're not a UX professional, their mind's eye is going to be very different. And now would nice thing, like you said, is when you can actually demo this to people, you can take you out of the realm of opinion and go, I go, I like this, now show it to 15, 20 clients, and you can actually, you, you get to push back, and the CEO goes, well, I had one more Um It's a work, it's a spreadsheet. He doesn't like zebra spreadsheet. He thinks it looks bad, it looks old, and so forth, and he's like, no. But that's his opinion, so you go up and go, we're doing data groups and goes, all right, I'll put this in front of you. And then the number one comment of 90% of people in front of me going, when well, I have more than 10 rows, this is impossible to read to keep my place. Could you please put back zebra straight? And that takes it away from your opinion because you showed them how it actually worked and now you actually have data going, well, that's your opinion, but 90% of our clients don't like it. But we have to admit that's the client's opinion. Yeah. And it's important as UX people to know how do you make a grid so that people don't lose their place. 
and, and then the, their customers wouldn't come back and say, I'm losing my place, I want zebra striking. No, they don't want zebra striking. They just don't want to lose their place. Yeah. Okay, real quick, two things. First thing, I apologize, the first Saturday workshop here, so we're getting through some bugs. Um, they, for some reason, we don't have drinks. Um, but when you come out the door and take a right, there's a coffee room right at the end, and we have plenty of cups and water, so you can help yourself with some water or coffee or tea, whatever you want down there. We don't have sodas, I apologize. Um, second thing, I'm going to show you three things really quick, and then while you're eating, you can continue to play with your prototypes. So the first one is, I created a flow out of habit before I created this prototype. I highly recommend that normally. I didn't do it for time purposes, but I did keep it in the demo file that you have. It's a super simple little guy. I have a gallery, then I have a monster detail. I choose to add my monster. It checks to see whether or not I have an account. I can create an account or I can log in and then I can see my monster's been added. I always recommend starting with boxes and arrows before you start prototyping. Otherwise, you end up redoing things and it's just extra work. Um, so that's that. Second, don't forget that at the end, we're going to have something that does this. Woo! <laughs> He's dancing. Oh, so you need to have room for this thing to go left and right. If you made your detail with text, we could still move it left and right, but it's, you're going to have a super tiny little thing. So it's a little more fun if it's bigger. Also, check it out. Boom! Oh, it changed colors. Right? That's a master. So what I did to do that, if you want to take a stab at it during lunch, is I created a master called Heart. And in it, I added a heart from the icons library. You can just search for heart. There's my heart. And this is where it gets a little more complicated. But if you go up here, see this selected? You can choose whether this is selected or not. It's not selected by default. So I'm going to go to new interaction and scroll all the way to the bottom. Oops, click on it. New interaction all the way to the bottom and say, Style effect for selected. When it's selected, I want the fill color to be red. Okay? Now I say on click, on click, set it selected. This widget. And I'm actually going to toggle that. So it'll toggle on and off, on and off. Every time I click it, it'll set selected, unselected, selected, unselected. Say okay. Well, because I have the selected as a red background, and by default it's black, if I go to my gallery now, and I drag this heart on, which should be smaller, but I hit preview, every time I click it, it toggles between selected and unselected, which makes it appear that I've liked it. So you can do that if you want during lunch. Um, another thing you may have noticed is my prototype is in my footer. And if I click on it to move my footer, nothing happens. Bummer, right? It's in a master. My master's locked to the background. I can just right click and lock, unlock to master location, and now I can move it. And because my footer and my header are in different masters, moving my footer is not moving my header. If I had put my footer and my master locked in the same one, unlocking it would be moving them both, mm -hmm. which is why they're each in their own master. So, yeah, so those are some things you guys can play with while you're eating your lunch. Um, so we'll do a break until 1 to get everybody to this point, and then at 1 o'clock we'll talk about how to create our scroll effect. Sound good? Yes. So if you have questions throughout lunch, me, Mike, and Shane can help to get to, to this point where you've got your gallery and your hearts and all that good stuff. Can you just uh, keep the parameters open for the heart? Yeah. Yes, which where, uh, yeah, oh, you wanted to see the, yeah. this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. Where is the bathroom? Uh, just when you walk out the door, take a right, and it's just to these glass doors, just to the right. Glass doors to the right. Yeah, yours is just in front of the fire maker, for the water.
and I'm going to go to icons, and I'm going to click the search and find the star. And it just starts out a black star. I'm going to change it to be gray, because nothing is selected yet. And then make it a little smaller. Oops, caps locked it in scale. Shift might be better. Um, okay, so I have a star. Now I'm going to right click on my star and go to style effects. And I'm going to toggle this selected. Because when it's not selected, it's just a gray star. When someone selects it, I want it to become a gold star. So I'm in my selected style effects. I'm going to change my fill color to gold. Gold is orange. Yeah, I like that. And if preview is on, so I can see the change. If I turn preview off, I can see what it looked like before. Right? So my unselected and my selected. You could do a lot more to it. As you can see, there's a whole lot of options. I'm just changing the color. Everybody with me? Okay. So now I still just have a gray star, but it has a selected effect now. So now I'm going to go to view interaction. Oops. Click on your star. And you can see I have a selected effect, right? So you should see a selected effect on the shape. If you don't see that, you don't have a selected effect. I'm going to click new interaction and on click. I could get fun with it and do something else. I could say like on mouse enter, right? So when your mouse hovers over the object or on double click, or maybe I don't want it to be just on click. You don't have to limit yourself. We're just doing one of many options here. So on click, I'm going to set selected or checked, right? I'm going to, I want the user to be able to mark this star as on. So I clicked, I want them to set it selected. Now someone had asked me about this. It's kind of a throwback from code that actually throws in here. If you know JavaScript, you have the option to point to this, which is basically an object that's selected. So instead of pointing to a specific object, you can say, this thing I have selected, apply it to that. Well, there's only one object on the page. Mm -hmm. So this and the object in the list are the same thing. If you had a whole bunch of objects, you could just show this. Hi, yeah. <coughs> so I'm going to hit this. You can hit heart, whichever. And I can set it to select when I click it. But then it won't do anything else because it's just on and it stays that way. Or what, select, I mean true, and then it just stays on. I get selected to false. And then when I click it, it marks it false. And then it just stays off. Or I can do toggle, and then every time I click it, it goes back and forth between true and false. And so I say OK, and that's it. I click off of it. Now it's still in a master though, so I can't preview it. Actually, you know, I say that, but I haven't tried it in nine. Yeah, no, that would have been cool. Um, so it's in my master, so it's there. I'm going to go to my gallery, and then I'm going to pull it in from my master. I'll put it next to my curtain. And now if I hit preview, I can click it and it turns on. Now if I go over here, Wait, how do you pull it from your I just dragged it and dropped it. So I've got my masters. So you've libraries and masters as your two panes. I have masters and I can just drag it onto the page. And then you can where am I? Here we go. You can turn on your trace if you want to see what's happening. Every time I click it, it's toggling that shape, selected, unselected, selected, unselected. So remember last time we said add to pages, and we checked the pages? Mm -hmm. Or you could just, in your master, just drag it onto each page. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the <laughs> text box, right? So I'm trying to resize the text box. The norm it doesn't resize with the box. No, once you've set it, it's just an initial default. Okay. Um, um, so um, what he's saying is if I hit T and I, well, it's not even going to, it's not even setting it there for me. Let me go into my page. I it would help if I hit T on a page. So if I hit T and it fills that with warm ipsum, and I get this like, oh, look at all that great text. Oh, I only wanted it to be that big. Well, I've already dropped it. And so now I just double click and, and get rid of it all. Okay. Okay. It'll show the text even if there's overflow. It'll always show everything. You can't use, like in, I think, um, Adobe, right? Like if your box is smaller than your text, it doesn't show your overflow. It'll always show your overflow. All right, 
So what did we decide? Oh, navigation, right? Super cute. All right. So we're going to start a new master. <laughs> I have one. And we're going to call it navigation. All right. Everybody got a master called navigation. All right. I'm going to open it up. And we're going to, in our master called navigation, which is currently blank, we don't have anything yet at all. We're going to add a box. I like to drag and drop. I just do. That's what I do. You don't have to do that. You can hit R, especially if you're a sketch user. You probably want to do that and draw. But you're going to get a big old box. I'm going to make mine black because it kind of comes over everything. Not today. Yeah. <laughs> At work, you should probably think more and put more thought into it. Um, so this is my navigation, basically. So imagine it open on my page, right? If I go, let's actually do that. Let's put it on all our pages. Right click, drop, oh, sorry, add to pages. <coughs> Okie dokie, preview. Ta-da, it's horrible. There it is, all my pages. Right, but that's all it is right now. So I know I need to fix the spacing, right? I need it to be over to the right, and I know this is 360 pixels wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the right side of this and bring it over until it's at 360. Actually, probably be, let's see where it's 360. I'm gonna do 360 minus, I have to do math. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to my gallery page and get it right where I need it. And then I'm gonna paste it on my master. Sweeping. There, now it's the right size. See how easy that is? Alright. So I have a box that's gonna be my navigation drill that's gonna slide out. You can have it as wide or as not wide as you want. I recommend going about three quarters of the way across the screen so you have room for your text, but you can still see that kind of like screen behind it. Everyone with me so far? Yeah. And you're going to add it to all your pages and hit preview. And you should have a nice big black box on top of your beautiful designs. All right, now I'm going to need a way to close this navigation. Okay? So I'm going to go back to my icons. I happen to like the arrow. A R R O W. I happen to like this little guy. If you want to put a star, whatever you want to put, but you need a way to close your navigation. You can make it look as nice or not nice as you want. Good? All right, so we've got a big black box with the white arrow. Or yours could be red and pink, whatever you want. And as of now, it's on all three pages. Right? Yes, and it's on all three pages and doesn't do anything. So now we're just going to add a uh, Alright, so now we're going to add a And when you're ready, we need to add some links, right? Because navigation takes you places. So was that arrow in It was in the um, it's in icons. Okay. Yep, and I just did a search for arrow. You can put it on the left, you can put it on the right, wherever you want to put your navigation. I might make this arrow a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make my text white so I can see it. And a little bit bigger, maybe. And we have three pages. We have gallery, detail, and login. Right? But detail is something you really can't get to until you've gone to the gallery and clicked into something. So I don't want people to just go to detail, because which detail am I going to? So I'm just going to put two links, gallery and login. Once you're ready, you're going to highlight one of your links, and in the interactions pane, 
There's common interactions that you can use, which is really nice. It says on click, open link, or you can do it manually. New interaction, on click, open link. And my gallery is going to go to the gallery page. Done. And when I click on login, and I'll do this one last time, I'm going to go to the login page. I'm done. After you clicked on click, where did you go? Open link? Uh-huh, exactly. And then it should give you a list of your current pages that you can link to. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we have our navigation bar with two links, and they're hooked up to go to two pages. And then if you save and preview, it's still right in our way, but if I click on those, they should take me to the correct pages. You should see it happening in the background. I'm in the master, okay. yes, I'm not on any pages yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the navigation master, and I add a link, and so while it's selected, I go to new interaction, and when somebody clicks this object, so on click, mm -hmm. I want it to open a different page, or link, so I'll open link. And you can see here, it automatically loads the pages in my project, but I could also take, a, take you somewhere else. If I have a back button, I could link back to the previous page, if I wanted this to be a back button. I could reload the page again. So you can do lots of things. We're just linking them off to somewhere else. Although, when we previewed, it's like the menu is still there. I mean, it changes the background in the back. Yeah, but we haven't even closed it yet. Yep. Yep, you're good. So we should all have this really annoying box. It's like a censorship box in our way, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't need this anymore because I can use this to change my pages now. Okay, so how do we hide this thing? And then how do we open it so it's like a nice layover? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna kind of work backwards. We're gonna hide it first. Before we can hide it, we need to copy everything in here. So you should have all your widgets selected. And you're gonna right click and create a dynamic panel. You'll know it worked if once you've selected everything, you click your dynamic panel and hide it and everything disappears. If everything didn't disappear, you didn't get it all on the panel. Just control all of what you want to select. Yeah, exactly, yes. Control A, select everything, right click, and create a dynamic panel. So dynamic panels, think of them like pages within the page, in a sense. But it's not the size of the whole page, it's the size of whatever you just did. It could be this big, it could be this big. But it's something that you want to design external to the page. It has its own functionality and all this stuff. And then you drop it onto a page and it, it works like its own page on top of the page. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's a panel, but it's a dynamic one. So right now, it's visible. We don't want it to be visible, right? We don't want this big censorship box all over our pages unless we choose to open the navigation. So we are going to hide it. It's hidden. So now if I save it and I hit preview, I don't see it anymore. Oh, I see I missed something. It's got a preview. If you double click on it, you can open it up. No, see, I missed those two. There. Now I got everything in there. So now I hit save, I hit preview. There we go, it's hidden. I don't have my arrow, I don't have my links, I have nothing, it's hidden back there. I can't even get to it. But I need to be able to open it. So I'm gonna add um, a menu icon, a hamburger icon, which is the bars. So if you wanna search for it, it's bars. And I'm gonna put it right here. It's a little big, let's do that. 
I'm gonna make it white would look best on my blue background, but you're not gonna be able to see it for the purpose of this demo, so I'm gonna make it ugly. But you would probably want it to be white. So I hit save and hit preview, and now I have my menu button. But it doesn't do anything yet, you haven't picked it up. Did but that's the button it? that would open. It's not hidden. So I have a hidden dynamic panel that has a back arrow and three links in it, and I have an unhidden icon that's not in the dynamic panel. This is what's gonna open and close, unhide and show, or hide and unhide my dynamic panel. Are we all together so far? Yep. Okay. So click on your dynamic panel again. If it's called dynamic panel name, like mine is, you're not gonna be able to find it very easily. So let's name it. I'm gonna name it PNL, that's my panel, to remind me it's not TXT, this is the panel, PNL, navigation. So I've just highlighted my panel and hit, called it panel navigation. If you wanna double check that everything's in your panel, just double click it, which will open it. I've got my back button, I've got my links, everything's in there. Close it again. It's called panel navigation. Good? All right, so when I click this hamburger button, I want something to happen. So new interaction on click. I want to show my navigation panel. Now I'll just leave it like that for now. So on click, show. Panel navigation, and then okay. And then when you test that, you should be able to click your hamburger and get a panel. It's pretty basic right now. We don't have the overlay, and it's not sliding out yet, but it opens, right? But now it's stuck open, and this thing is in front of it, right? So we still have to tweak it. So what I want to say now is I want to edit this show and I want to slide it in, I always get this wrong, slide, left? Yes. Yeah. This is, again, why we test. Um, I want it to swing out. And if I go to more options, I want to bring it to the front and treat it like a light box. So I just added a whole bunch of stuff at once, right? So it's going to show up when I click on the hamburger. It's going to Swing in from the left. So you take about 500 milliseconds to do that. You can make it <laughs> fast, you know, you can make it bounce, whatever. I'm going to swing it in from the left. I'm going to bring it to the front so it's in front of everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to treat it like a light box so it has that fade behind it. And if I click off of it, it closes automatically. Mm -hmm. and it's done. Mm -hmm. Let's test that, see if I screwed it up. So I clicked it, and there it is, and there's my slide in, and I've got that nice background so I can click off of it, it closes by itself, right? Or I can make this arrow slide it away, because let everybody know to click the background. Anybody having trouble with getting there so far? Okay. So now I'm going to double click on my panel, and click on my arrow icon, and we're going to make it close. So new interaction, when the user clicks it, I want to hide the panel. Now it always defaults to show, so you need to actually hit hide. And I'm going to animate it to the right. I want to swing it over. More options. Um, actually no, you don't need to do more options because it's a light box, so it just closes. Light box just close. I don't need to make it a light box when I close it, I'm just closing it. So, okay. By the way, this version looks so much better than me. It's like, and I like when I when I turn dark mode on too, it really receives everything else and I can see my prototype. Right? It's just so much easier to understand. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if I go into preview, see this is what I do, and then I have literally hundreds of tabs. You don't have to hit preview, I'm sorry. I keep telling you that. Just go to Chrome and hit refresh. Um, oops, not save. Refresh. All right, so now if I click it, it slides out, and then I click my arrow and it slides close. Or I can click out and click off of it because it's a light box, it'll automatically close. I can slide out and I can click login and it changes pages. And I can go to my login and gallery because it's a master, right? It's already on all my pages. I can navigate around and it's there on all of my pages. 
My arrow is having a trail. It might be a bug. The what, what? It has a trail. Like when it's closing, yeah. the arrow. Yeah. The arrow has a trail. Yeah. The text has a trail as it closes. Oh, I see. Preview. Well, you you know what? You downloaded it today, didn't you? And I haven't updated. Oh, you had it before? Do you have the latest version? I wonder if you have different Probably versions. Probably not. Probably not. It's two weeks old. Yeah, because they update it constantly. Okay. That's really interesting, though. I've that never seen that trail. Yeah, I know there's an update on Friday. <laughs> 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 guys like you and I know things happen real fast. All right. So everybody's got that working okay? Yeah? Yep. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Well, that's Good questions? Look how much you guys have learned already. We could barely create a header when we started. Now you have like navigation. <laughs> Got it done. <laughs> All right, so we're almost hooked up. Um, we still have a detail page that we can't get to. So from the gallery, oh, and you see my, my, my yellow, you know, I've got my yellow thing turned on. Again, you can go to view masks and turn that off if you want so you don't see that all the time. I like to keep it up. It just reminds me that I have something there. Uh, but I'm going to take Suzy Q. I'm going to click on that view button and add a new interaction. Again, it's just an on click event. On click, open link, and I'll actually go into the detail page. So, when you select the button, is it also selecting the text itself? Or that just the button, okay, the just whole area. Okay. If you wanted, you could take, I mean, this is again, it depends on how you want to do your design. Right. But you could go into default and take a hotspot. Okay. And you can make this entire card clickable, <gasps> right? And then, and you don't even need a button then, right? You right. just make your whole thing an on click of it. But you better make your card look clickable. Yeah, you should have a good affordance <laughs> if you do that. <laughs> Excellent point. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that sketch, don't you have to put labels on buttons or, or is it, you have to put, yeah, you I can't really, create a text object. I very, very rarely go with the sketch. So this is more user interface based. Well, Sketch has a much wider audience. Yeah. For the relative, just yeah. any kind so of you design. can design any type of UI in Sketch, but this is about using an interface. Or you can design a magazine layout in Sketch. All right, I'm going to make yeah. my navigation um, thing white now because it's bothering me. But you guys know it's there. It's not missing. It's just hard to see on here. OK, so now if we refresh our page instead of being preview, We've got our navigation, and from the gallery, I can click on view, and I go to Johnny Boy, because I hooked up the wrong one. Whatever. <laughs> um, and we've got our hearts. Did you can... catch what she did? Instead of hitting preview, and it mentioned if you have two monitors, if you've done preview once, yeah. just hit the reload. Yeah, if you have two monitors, I keep this open on one monitor, and I keep sketch or actually open on my other monitor, and then you can just kind of play with it while you're working. Make or sure in this case, it's a tab. Go to the tab yeah. and hit reload. All right, so let's make our gallery. It's 122. I think we should be able to get the gallery done. All right, detail. Sorry, so 24 in this two minutes. Well, my computer says 122. Well, oh, well, that's clock's always wrong. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Uh, I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to send that to the back. So right now, my navigation master's on top. I'm going to send it to the back. Because I'm sending the whole master to the back, I lost that button as well. I'm doing that because I want it out of the way for the moment. I'll bring it back to the front when I'm done. But I just don't want to keep clicking it while I'm trying to do other stuff in front. Does that make sense? How do you do that? Just getting it out of the way. Yeah, how do you send it back? Uh, right here up at the top. I'm just putting my, so if you go to your outline, I'm basically taking the layer and moving it to the bottom so I don't keep clicking on it while I'm trying to interact with the page. Which one um, did you want to click on? What well, I'm gonna, because I'm going to start messing with this guy. And if I keep that in front, then every time I click, whoops. Every time I click, I'm gonna have to click through it. Okay, so and I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Here's a little tip. This section here, I'm using my laser pointer. There's two different ways to select things by draw uh, with your mouse. One is if you touch it at all, it gets selected. One is only selected if you completely surround the box. Sometimes you want it one way, sometimes you want it another way. If you've got a whole bunch of things there, it selects too much if you just touch it. Then you probably want the 
I want it completely surrounded. So you can toggle between these two modes. Yep. And the outline being, if I just drag it and put the bottom. You can do that too. Okay. Yeah. Also, when you hide it, it works. Yeah, you can hide it too. Yeah. However, there's lots of there's lots of ways to go about it. It's just preference. I usually, honestly, the outline pane's new to nine, right. and I'm used to not using it, so I never open it. I have to kind of remember that it's there. Mm -hmm. They had a pane that had. It was called layers. It was called layers. And it was on the right hand side, and I was it. Um, okay, so let's go back to, where's my original? Our goal here is this, right? I like that little background because I just think it's fun to show that not everything is moving. <coughs> you don't have to put that background in, it's totally up to you. It's just another object behind my mover. Let's put it in. Let's put it in, all right. I heard a request. Uh, so I'm just gonna make a little box, basically however artistically you want to throw that guy in there. I'm going to send it all the way to the back because it's just going to sit back there. Um, and when I fill it, I'm going to take a little bit of color from my picker out of this guy because it's like a nice visual match and just set the opacity really low. And there's the background of my dancing Johnny Boy. Um, okay, so I need three different versions of Johnny Boy, right? So I'm going to actually create a dynamic panel right off of here. I'm going to drag it on instead of selecting because I want the area to be bigger than that picture is, that scrolls. I'm going to call this panel gallery. Well, actually, the whole page is gallery, right? We'll call this in, I don't know, what slider. So wait, what is this for? Yeah. So I went into the uh, default library. Mm -hmm and scroll down until I saw dynamic panel. I just dragged it on top of the screen in the area that I want to move. And then I named it panel slider. Now I'm gonna click through, so I'm clicking slowly until I get to Johnny Boy. I'm actually gonna take him out of here entirely. I'm doing my copy paste thing again. You don't have to copy paste, you can drag from scratch, but that way I, I know where I like it. I'm going to open up by double clicking and paste. So now he's inside of my panel. Does that make sense? So what should you do with the banner? Oh, yeah. So well, here's my, so let me back up. Cool. There, okay. So I have a page mm -hmm. and it has Johnny Boy and it has a box. Awesome. I want Johnny Boy to be inside of a panel. So I'm basically putting another layer of page on and I want it in that layer. Mm. Does that kind of make sense? Like a grouped yeah. layer. So I'm gonna, we'll make it easier. I'll just take them off all together. I take a dynamic panel. This is my grouped dynamic. It's got, so you can kind of tell by the image, it has layers in it, right? I want it to be inside of it. So I'm gonna drag it onto the page and this whole area that I've set to be the dynamic panel is what is dynamic. It's the area of my slider. Everything within this box can be slid. I'm gonna call it panel slider. So right now it's just a blank box. If I click preview, you can't even tell it's there. It's just a box. It doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I want Johnny Boy in that box, in that group of functionality. If I double click on it, I go into the panel, my panel slider, and there's multiple states that I can do. So I'm going to take Johnny Boy, I'm going to cut him off of here, okay? I'm going to double click and put him, paste him in here. Now he's inside my dynamic panel. I'm trying to think of another way to say that it's not technical. It's a container. A panel is a container on my page, and now that asset is in that container. So if I open the container, I have an outline of things. Here's my panel, and here are things inside of that panel. If I hide the panel, the whole panel hides. If I move it around, everything moves around. Ooh, I like have way too much inside my panel. Hey, all you want inside your panel is your one little monster. Yes. But you need to add the other one. Yes. How many can you add? As many as you want. Like three? We're going to do three. Four? You could add 200. 200? You have a really heavy file. 
All right, so we have a panel with Johnny Whiteside. Questions? Outline view. I just want to see in the outline view where the text is. I did it totally wrong. No. So if I back up, I don't see that. This is how I started. I have an image. My button, is this, when you click on it, you'll see a highlight. My button's down there. Here's my count with my heart, my heart, arm of some, giant word text, footer header. So my image is on its own, and I want it to be inside of a special group that I can toggle when that group shows on and off and how that group responds to input. And that's dynamic. So I get a dynamic panel, I put it on the page, and I take Johnny Boy off the page, He's gone, so now I have a panel with one state. I go into that state, and I add Johnny Boy, now he lives within the panel. See, my thing is that yeah, we're getting everything else. Everything, everything else, else is going inside, inside that the panel. Are you dragging the panel onto the page, or are you right-clicking and adding to it? But, yeah, let's take a look at it. I drag it. So see? Yeah. We want to make like, the dots that get it. Is that it's part a, of it's Johnny? A it's a, it's oh, it's a second panel. Oh, that should be fine. That's what I did. You're, still, you're in the states. That's mm -hmm. okay. So based on oh, okay. the It's weird. There is is not going. They're still staying part of their page. So all you it's want not behaving the same way. You're on the metro. It's like about to get on one. This is the nine thing. Yeah. And you have all of your layers underneath like I do. She's getting it in the right place. You see how they're doing you? It doesn't go completely into the picture where yours was blank in this mm -hmm. so, oh, so there's an isolate button. Oh, isolate. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you're still seeing uh, all that stuff when you open your panel, if it seems like you're still seeing everything, you got to isolate your view to just show what's in the panel. Sorry about that, mine was on by default. That's my bad. I forgot that existed because I always have it on. <laughs> Let's click on Lauren and isolate her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, so isolate. So you can just see what's in your panel. Okay? Cool. So now if we hit, yep. What's the white box? The white box. It's oh, I think, one. honestly, it should show up everywhere that the panel's active. Okay. I don't know why. I think it's a bug. Um, so if I hit close, I can see it. Because it's in my panel. If I hide my panel, I don't see my monster anymore because he's in my panel, which I've hidden. Right? Mm -hmm. So right now it doesn't do anything, but he's inside of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And if I click on it, there's the option to have multiple states or pages, layers, within this one panel. I need to add a layer for every monster that I want to swipe between. Because what you're doing is basically swiping between layers. So I'm going to add two more and bring in different versions of monsters to look at for the other ones. Is that the one I'm already using? Oh. Yeah, I'm already using that one. Let's do this one. <coughs> All right. So I've got a dynamic panel with three states. If you go to your outline, you can see each state has an image. And I can change my states here, or I can change them over here. So I can look through and three, see all three of my different images, what they look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're good there? Yes. So a dynamic panel with three states, each state has a different image. It is like a baby. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to close my panel and hit preview. It only, so again, a panel has a set of layers. You always see one layer at a time. So I still see one guy. I'm only seeing the top layer. Now what I need to do is add an interaction that when I swipe, it shows me the next layer. 
So I'm going to click on my dynamic panel and say new interaction. I could click. I could click through the gallery. I didn't want to fill so I want to swipe. Your, your panel was named something, right? Yeah, I named it. Um, oh, it was. You're right. It was. Mm -hmm. I, made, I made it one over and over. Slider. Um, it's just a good habit to name things. And then you need to call it from another object. Because we were getting more and more objects in our page, they start to get lost. Um, I even, I think in my original one, I even I have all my panel. I have like state one, two, and three, not not this state, but I called it one, two, three. In my original, original, because this is not the first version I've done, I named them all. <laughs> but I was like, well, we're doing it. <laughs> um, okay, so panel slider, new interaction. I'm going to do on swipe. And again, I always get my right and left mixed up. So I want to go from, I'm going to swipe left. left to left, right? On swipe left, set panel state. Because now I'm not showing and hiding the whole panel like I did with my navigation. I'm changing the state within the panel. So set panel state within the panel slider, not the panel navigation. I think we named those. And I'm going to set it to the next state. So I'm also going to wrap it. So if I keep going, it'll wrap back to the first one. Make sense? Yeah. Then I'm going to animate it. Again, this is all personal preference. You don't have to animate. And I'm going to, and here's where I confuse myself again. I want it to slide left, left and swing. <coughs> and I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to test it. If I swipe this way, he only works one direction right now. So we have to go get the other side and do the right. So while it's clicked, I'm going to add a new interaction for on swipe right. On swipe right, set panel of the slider to the previous state. Again, wrap. And now I'm going to go right. And I'm going to swing it. Wait, did I do that right? Swing, right, swing. So you create a new interaction there. Yes. So I have swipe left and swipe right. So can you open the swipe right? Animate out. Okay. So we don't have anything to do in animate out okay. as well. As you don't have to. So here, let me turn these off just to show you what they look like. Uh, none. So if I hit preview, if I go this way, it just pops open. If I go this way, it slides over. So that's I have a swing. A yep, that's my swing from the... So you just play with it until you find what you're, you know, the design that you're going for. Yeah, this is it. What am I on left this time? Great. Watch your physical affordances, right? You did do the answer about what it should be. Yeah, Not yeah. you can do a lot with this, but don't forget to design a good <laughs> interface when you're done. <laughs> so now if I go preview, I've got my right and I've got my left. Great. But which one am I on? I can't tell. If only I had something like this that showed me which one I was on. Okay, so that's another dynamic panel. There's a couple ways we could do it that's a little more complicated. I'm not going to get into it. Easiest way to do it is another dynamic panel. And that panel has three states. One of them with a white button on the left, one with a white button in the middle, one with a white button on the right. And when I swipe left, it changes the state of that panel too. So it's not actually working, which is why we don't want to use the code for real, but it's mimicking real functionality by just swiping that one to a different design. And we saw what happens when you don't do swing, it just changed. Yeah. Well, that's what we need for the buttons. Right? We just want it to change. Otherwise, the buttons would slide out and the new state would slide in. Exactly. So there's lots of options in here. Um, and if we go to our final preview now, we have, uh, oh, sorry. I got to put my navigation back up front. Up front. Save. All right. So we have a navigation bar. We can go to our gallery. Oh, we can go to our button. 
Um, we didn't hook up the login form. I'll let you guys take that home as homework. We can like this guy, we can look through his photos, um, we can move around our navigation. So I feel like you guys learned quite a bit today, yeah? Yeah. yeah. We got pretty much through our prototype. Um, so if we do a 102, if, if we, you know, I'll, I'll see what you guys think afterwards. Um, if we do a 102, then we probably do another design that got more into that form stuff, like how you create dynamic forms, how you do error validation, and put in options and things like that. Um, but hopefully, you guys know enough now to be dangerous, but not be afraid, right? You can, you can go in, you can play with this, you understand how to move around, what the interactions are. There are so many interactions you can play with. I mean, go home and make it instead of swipe. Go home and make it something else. Mouse tap, on long click, on hover. You can do on hover, and every time you go over the thing, it just switches. <coughs> like, you can play with it. There's all sorts of options in here. You just have to pick the option that makes the most sense for the design you want. Another reason why you want to think about your design before you open Axure. Do sketches, do flows, because otherwise you could sit and play for three days on the coolest thing. If you know before you start building it, I want that behavior, then you can just find that behavior, right? And not just fiddle forever. Right. Do we have the uh, your final? Class? Yes, it's the demo RP, which is in that shared Bitly file. Because I want to see the floating things. Yeah, and that has a couple other things in it. It's got the variable. Um, so variables, if you go to project range, project, um, global variables are up here. So you can add a variable, like, I don't know, logged in. And I use them like flags. I always default them to on or off, or yes or no. I can say off. And then I can do something to turn it on. Like if I go here and I have a form, and I go to, maybe this is my sign in button. Oops. So I can say on click, right? On click, mm -hmm. I want to go to a new page, whatever that page is. Maybe I want to go to the gallery. And I want to set my variable logged in to on or yes, right? Always put the variable above the click, because it'll do the click first and it won't get to the variable. <coughs> so now it's on. So then on another page, I could set a new interaction on load if login is on, show a different page. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, show this page. Maybe a logged in user can see different things. And so you can use them kind of like flags and then check the flag when you get somewhere and change the state of the page based on whether that flag is set or not. And it bears repeating just because you can doesn't, doesn't mean, mean you should. should. Do it if you need to communicate yes. an important idea, but don't worry about it otherwise. Once you really get excited because this is fun, mm -hmm. then that's one of the hangups that you're going to get stuck. There's a couple other hangups. This is a step or a couple, this is using a couple of steps of your workflow. But your workflow is your workflow. There's sketching, there's mm -hmm. interviews and research. Jumping in Axure isn't doing UX. Yes. Jumping in Axure could be used for some of the workflows and then talk to your VAs with only boxes and arrows. One of the other important things is that your boss, who's not very smart, will think you're programming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your boss will think you finished the application. <laughs> Let's launch it. Yes. <laughs> so keep, this is a prototyping tool to get information that this is, that this is even worth building even worth hiring an engineer to build for us. And that's well, the original um, idea of an MVP, minimal viable product. The only purpose of making an MVP is to answer research questions about should we build it. Even on this level, this does not equal a page, right? There are not as many pages in my product as there are on this flow. So my flow with them, I'll tell them, like, these are, this is just, I just need to know what happens. We'll decide how many pages it is later because of panels and things like that, which is how code actually works. Things don't always need to be in other, it's always about pages. And so sometimes I'll come in here and just rough sketch, I'll be like, okay, so gallery, that's probably a page, so we're gonna have something over here. It's gonna have a couple boxes in it, something like this. Okay, everybody agree? Yep, all right, great. So then monster details. So then we're gonna have another page. I don't know why my thing's not showing up in here. And maybe that's going to have one big image and some text. 
And so, I don't know, it'll be something like that. Everybody agree? Yep, okay, great. Add monster, do we need a new page? I don't know, we'll think about it. Okay, we'll come back to that, I'll go, I'll go noodle in it. It's an account creation, so if you got a create account, okay, maybe we're gonna create another page for that. But I'm having a conversation with the VA and I'm not getting into the functionality of this, and so we've already got the flow nailed. And then I can start to play with how far do I need to go to test this. An important thing to the, the thought on you is that if you're a hammer, the whole world looks like a nail. So your tool mm -hmm. is actually sets the perspective of what you think you're doing. If you're using a page by page um, tool like Envision, you think about, I have to click on this page and then it will take me to another page. And then I click on this page, it takes me to another page. When really, those could have all been done on one interactive page mm -hmm. and made a lot of sense. But when you're using a page by page tool, you tend to spread it out, it's click, wait, click, wait. Using a tool like this that allows you to have interactions, it's click, open, move, you know, maybe as a pop-up for adding something, the page never reloads. And then you have one single interactive page if you want it, which could be the solution for your UX problem. So having a tool like Axure allows you to consider things that may be good for the user in the use case that aren't necessarily what the owner of the tool thought that you should do, like click page by page. Yeah. And you can create libraries. Um, it's pretty easy. I'll let you guys Google it. It's, it's just as simple as creating pages. Um, but I have libraries for all sorts of things, like this is my ScreenFlow library that I use at work, so that I can do this and I can just drag and drop, okay, that's going to be a light box, that's going to be a form, this is going to be a record, this is wow. going to be a table, and, but there's low fidelity. So I can have a whole conversation around this without actually doing a lot of work. This is a little long one. Or did you just uh, it's just my, it fits the, it actually fits like the way our screen layout works. Right. Um, but to create a new one, you just go to File, New Library. And then every page is one of these widgets. So if I want to create, this is widget one. Maybe widget one looks like this, right? And widget two looks like this. With two boxes. Now I've got a library, so I can save it. Save as desktop, save. So I can close it, and now I go back into our, our prototype that we were playing with. I'll add a new page, so it's blank. I add my library. Add library, delete me. I think my computer's going on. And there's my library widgets I just made. So you can make your own library pretty easy. And I just I just have a ton of libraries because I said I've been using for 13 years. My library is for everything. You can also go here. No. Go get libraries. It'll take you to an actual page full of community libraries. Some you pay for, some you don't. They've got sketch, sketchy themes, like this one looks like it's got all sorts of black and white. Um, Here's a good, nice prototype thing in green, different templates and libraries, wireframes. And then they've got bonus stuff. Here's a whole thing about pinching and zooming. You can go get all sorts of libraries online. Okay. Icons, all sorts of stuff. Um, so, uh, there's this, a form. Oh, shoot, Mike. We have a quick survey we'd like everybody to take. I will drop it. So put it into the, uh, I'll put it in here. Yeah, what's the... Oh, I guess I have to go to my email and get it home. That's not it. Leave that to yourself. <laughs> um, 
And any questions? We've got about 10 minutes, and I'm planning on staying a little after. So as you guys are wrapping up, any other questions about the tool or how to use something? I want to make sure you guys walk away feeling pretty comfortable with it, so let me know. Um, otherwise... I guess the YouTube has a tutorial. Oh my god, yes. YouTube And Axure itself is really great. Um, the only thing that's going to be funky is right now, this is a beta. You guys got a premiere tour into a private beta. How long can we use the... Until April. Okay. I think, so beginning of April. So you have a month and a half. Um, if you go to, I think it's under support. Yeah, it's not support. Core training. Training. They have tutorials over like everything. The trick is these are all still eight tutorials, version eight. And version eight, same functionality, but the interface is a little different. So it just takes some getting used to it. One or two videos, but most of that is really broad. Yeah. The, uh, to do the transitions and all that, yep. it's the same. Yep. Yeah, it's just finding where it is. Right. Because they've moved some things around. Their tutorials are really dry, just text and images. They have a few videos, but YouTube, say, after nine. Oh, so they already have them. They already video. have them. Right. Yeah, people trying to figure them out, figure out things out and share it. Uh, I think sometime this summer they're supposed to be releasing Action 9. The nice thing about it is they're going to do a different, um, it might already be up here, no. Um, Action 8 was a, well I guess that's changed too, it's kind of already up here. You can do a per month thing, so $29 a month, I guess, is your general pro anybody license. Um, they used to have... Yeah, they used to have perpetual here, perpetual licenses, um, and then students, if you're enrolled in a degree at an accredited high school university or whatever, you're qualified to get a free one-year subscription. So if you take a class at four hour for 300 bucks or something, you get a free one. Um, teaching, that's how I got one. Um, maybe talk to Ironhack, anybody who's still there. Um, and see if they can find a way to get in with them since it's a UX place. Uh, so yeah, it's not super cheap, but it's a great tool for a company. And so the point is you don't pay for it, you work somewhere and you get them to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this will give you some time to get to learn it if you don't work somewhere that has it or you're um, consulting so that you have a chance to get used to it. So to our point about the benefits of Axure, the benefits are for the person who's paying for it, your boss. Because now that your boss can communicate these designs much more effectively to the sales team and to get the input and it's much more rich than these just these images, flat images. And when we have designed to flat images, we've been optimizing for pretty. If you only show screenshots, the only good screenshots a pretty picture. So we have these very unusable websites that translate really well into pretty pictures. But having something like Astro that shows the interactivity, then we can do our jobs, which is making a usable interface.